Oh, you let me forget to bring one. No. Manning, no, Manning, like put on. Manning clerk. No, 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 I don't like to put on my mask on the table. What happened with the glass? Because I have to see you better. Uh, at least I was a shield protection. When you're not, when you're not, like when like you're like not behaving, then I can't say. Look, look, look. As a compliment, I can see you better when you're not behaving. Went to my boss and go away your sign and had God bless you. They go away. What's that? Well, I had a, my bad. I had an envelope that says everybody that disappeared. When was it? I don't know. It disappeared since the last two meetings. Last two meetings? Yeah, I, had oh, well, I don't know. Yeah, nice beautiful folder. Uh, you go on a camp and I put it out. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you can get another one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Or are we going to do something else? I thought we were going to do go independently. See how we would on our own. So I share it with Harry, so you can communicate with Harry. And I figure maybe we'd run into court. That's what I thought. The price would be around that price range. So um, it's up to you guys what you think. Good evening, everyone. Uh, there's five council members in the chambers. If they can please have a seat so we can begin our meeting. Yeah, five. Councilman Delaziz. Men. So 
Do I sound funny with the mask? Council President. I know, I like it. Okay. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Patterson Municipal Council, we welcome you to today's workshop, Tuesday, March 15th, 6.30, well, 6.40 now, I believe. 6.43 to be exact. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Yes, Madam President. Roll call for Municipal Council workshop session March 15, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Councilman Abdelaziz? Present. Councilwoman Khan? Here. Councilman Jackson? Councilman Khalid? Present. Councilman Mendez? Uh, Madam uh, Clerk, yes, ma Councilman Mendez has called that he has a work commitment and that he will be late. Okay, thank you. Yes. Councilman Mims? Councilman Rivera? Councilman Velez? Yes. Madam President? Present. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. If you can please read the Statement of Compliance. Yes, Madam President. Statement of Compliance with the Open Public Meetings Law 2021 to 2022, meeting date March 15, 2022, time 6.30 p.m. Adequate notice of this meeting was compiled and disseminated in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Law in the following manner. One, the annual notice of regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council was compiled for the year 2021 to 2022 and are about July 1, 2021. Two, a schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2021 to 2022 was duly transmitted on or about July 1, 2021 to the North Jersey Herald News, The Record, The Arabic Voice, Italian Voice, Passe County Pulse, Dominicana News, Kiskader International, El Especial, The Patterson Press, City Post News, and Tap into Patterson, in addition to any other publication duly requesting such notices. Three, the schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2021 to 2022 was prominently posted in the lobby of City Hall first floor in the place reserved for the announcements of this type. Four, the schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2021 to 2022 was duly filed with the Municipal Clerk. Five, a copy of the schedule of regular meetings of the Municipal Council was mailed to any person who requested and pay the fee authorized by the Open Public Records Act. Madam President. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so welcome. Council Members, I'm going to respectfully ask that uh, once we start the uh, presentation, we have today um, Mr. Tom Wilson, I'm sorry, uh, to uh, present to us the findings on the police audit. So I'm gonna ask that we have him do his presentation, show, I believe he has a slideshow, uh, and then after we can have the questions. Um, but before we do that, Mr. Wilson, if you, if you may, okay, I just want to clarify something. Uh, council members, as you can all see, there are no more partitions. City Hall is fully open. Uh, for those that want to continue wearing masks, you are allowed to do so. Uh, I just want to put on record that our uh, council meeting, workshop meetings, uh, have never been televised. Throughout the pandemic and because we had virtual meetings, we were having all of our meetings televised uh, as per the, uh, open, the, public, the Open Public Meetings Act. Am I correct, Madam Clerk? Yes, yes. yes Madam Clerk. Okay, so last week um, I spoke to the clerk's office and I stated that we will no longer have uh, the workshop meetings televised just our regular. We are back, City Hall is fully open and the house is open to all constituency and anyone that would like to come before this council and address the council. Uh, but today was very important, not only because in speaking to Madam Clerk, there was not a notice put out, okay? But secondly, such a matter as this uh, police audit that has been in the works for quite some time. We know the climate of the nation and our city, what's going on in our city specifically. Uh, I thought it was only right 
to actually also uh, um, televise today's workshop meeting. So with that said, Madam Clerk, I'm going to take a motion for payment of bills. Once we vote on the bills, then Mr. Wilson, you'll be able to do your presentation. Actually, I'd like the director to say a few words before. Not right now. Um, payment of can bills. I have a motion for payment of bills? Th thank you, Council President. Summary of disbursements for March 15, 2022. Total payments is $4,610,447.84. There is no solid waste payments. I recommend it get paid. There is none? None. Thank you no, very no much. No solid waste. So, uh, motion to move payment of bills by Councilman Khalid. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Abdelaziz. Seeing no discussion, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Yes, Madam President. Roll call for payment of bills in the amount of $4,610,447.84. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Khalid? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Madam President? Yes. The vote is six in favor, three absent. Payment of bills is hereby adopted. Thank you. Thank you very much. So once again, I welcome everyone here to today's chambers. Uh, to Madam Clerk, thank you so much for always putting our packets and keeping us all together. Madam BA, to Corporation Council, uh, to our CFO, to our Captain uh, Becora, Director Spezial, uh, to all of our Deputy Chiefs, uh, Lieutenants, Captains, <laughs> Sergeants, whoever is here today, and most especially to our constituency, to our Chief of Fire, to the men and women of the fire department, I welcome you today here to the chambers. I would love to see you come out more often. So with that said, Director Spezial. Thank you. Good evening, Council President, members of the Municipal Council, Madam BA, Corporation Council, Madam Clerk. Good evening. It gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce Mr. Tom Wilson. As you know, uh, a study was conducted by the Police Executive Research Forum. Can you please turn your phones off? Put them vibrate at least, thank you. From, by the Police Executive Research Forum, which is a think tank out of Washington, D.C. Mr. Wilson isn't just an academic. He's also someone that comes as a chief, also worked for nearly three decades in policing, uh, and in Anne Arundel County, also has spent nine years with the Police Executive Research Forum that does all different types of studies, you know, based on the scope. But this is a tremendous asset. He's been very uh, humble. He's been great to work with. And it gives me great pleasure to give you uh, introduce, introduce. But I also want to uh, compliment the executive staff of the Patterson Police Department. As you stated, we have internal affairs here, we have our chief here, we have our captain and lieutenant, our captain of administrative services, our detective, Lourdes Fallon, of the detective divisions and investigative services, our patrol, chief of patrol, Ron Van Clyde. We have Chief Bert Ribeiro and Captain Mike Campanella. Every, every one of them is here. And I'm so proud that they're here to be with us tonight. They've worked with Tom hand in hand, including Todd Pearl, who um, his mom is, is recovering, and we pray for her. So thank you very much. It's now my honor to uh, introduce Tom Wilson. Thank you very much. Good evening, Madam Council, members of the council. Thank you uh, for the opportunity for us to present this information tonight. I'm going to go through a, a PowerPoint slide for you so we can streamline what we learned. Uh, we'll save questions if you can for the end. And I hope everyone has received a copy of this. Uh, we supplied electronic format. If you need more, we'll be glad to provide it. A little bit about, real quick, about PERF. So Jerry talked about that to some degree. We've been in business since 1976, and we're about improving policing. Uh, we, we've worked in a variety of areas from problem solving to crime strategies to use of force, and we hope to share that knowledge with you tonight on this information. And we're very appreciative of, of you, the city, of the mayor for asking us, and also to the state of New Jersey, who frankly has adopted 
uh, almost all of our guidelines pertaining to force and other, and other avenues like uh, internal affairs. So we're appreciative to all of you. Uh, I'm going to show you, so, you know, the, the history was the, the city put out a, an RFP focusing on several different areas that they wanted to review in the police department. We submitted that proposal. We're very fortunate and happy to have won that and work with the Patterson Police Department. So those five areas that, that we reviewed were the department's organizational structures, management systems, accountability measures, use of force policies, procedures, training, and tactics. We looked at community relations and we looked at transparency. Uh, what I can tell you, and as you see in the bottom there, it resulted in about 95 recommendations to the department. I can tell you after spending some time with the agency that they have about 31 of those that they've completed. Uh, half of these recommendations they've either completed or, or they're on the way. And the remainder of those recommendations, some of which are going to require some assistance from you. Some are going to require funding. Some are going to require further study and examination. So how do we do business? Uh, we conduct on-site interviews. You know, we, we follow up with telephone interviews. We did this during the course of COVID, which created some challenges. So a lot of our work was, was virtually, either over the phone or some type of Teams or Zoom concept. But we talked to sworn, non-sworn personnel, community leaders, city leaders. Uh, we also sought out some community folks on our own. So we did that and followed through with our own means to find community members. We looked at use of force policy. We did a review and analysis of that. We looked at a number of use of force investigations and documentation that followed with that. Uh, we looked at your Office of Professional Standards. We conducted a training review, and we examined a lot of data supplied by the department. So those are the big pieces that we focused on. Uh, some challenges. We, we, we did see, and we're going to talk about this tonight, some lack of resources. There's a lack of funding, a lack of support in some places. Uh, sworn officers are performing non-sworn duties. Uh, poor police facility and equipment, I'll talk about that. And some limited short and long-term planning. And some of that's a challenge of resources and availability, and we'll talk about the opportunity to improve those things. One thing we will share with you is the way we like to do business is as we identify and see these matters, we like to share them with the department. So as we went through this process, we would talk to the agency, we would explain some opportunities, and that's why you see today so many of those things are done. I'm going to go through some major takeaways. First, use of force. Uh, use of force documentation has been significantly improved in the Patterson Police Department. So historically, this was a form that you did on paper. That paper was very hard for us to track and read, and it, and it contained, uh, frankly, some limited data. The Attorney General's Office here in New Jersey has supplied every agency in the state of New Jersey with an opportunity to do that a lot better. Your police department has taken advantage of that and they're doing a great job. And, and so that's going to be an avenue for them to continue to look at this data moving forward. Uh, use of force should be reviewed at a higher level. Historically, it was reviewed at the sergeant level. Now within the department, that use of force review process is going much higher. One of the things that we noticed with Patterson is, and this is a good sign, most force is some type of compliance hold. This is a very low level of force that's required. You guys had very little use of any type of technology like an electronic control weapon. So that's some of that data, and I'll, and I'll show you a slide that has some of that information. 30% of your folks that you deal with uh, that, that force is applied are under the influence of some type of drug or alcohol. Uh, so what that tells you is your officers continue to need education and training on dealing with someone under some type of drug or alcohol uh, influence, and they're going to need additional training when it comes to things like mental health. And then the last slide shows you what force looks like, 57% on African American, 34% Hispanic, and 7% were white. And what this means is, although it doesn't match to your community uh, population, uh, it, it is something that needs to be watched and monitored. It, is it a problem? Not necessarily. It's something where you're going to have to look at these, this information more deeply. We've shown you how to do that. We've shown the, the department how to do that. OPS can continue to monitor. And then something you have in a department called a meaningful review board will be the ones that are, that are uh, continue to be responsible for looking at ways to improve some of these things. So recent improvements, you talked about your data collection tool. We talked about processes to monitor and examine these things. Supervisors must continue to receive training. The reality is that, that you have to ensure, you have to invest in your first line supervisors. Those individuals have to know what is expected of them. They have to look, know and understand how to review force and provide that advice going forward. 
use of force has to be looked at holistically. And what we mean by that is it's not the moment force is used, it's the entire picture that led up to that. And so the department is moving in that direction. And what that means is when that meaningful review board gets together and they review a use of force case, they need to look at the entire circumstance that led up to an officer uh, needing to use force and ask themselves, are there opportunities to do better? Can we improve the way we do business? Are there tools, is there policy, is there equipment that can make us better? And I will tell you that the meaningful review board that you see at the bottom here, this is an outstanding practice in policing. And it's just an opportunity. They're doing it now. We sat through those situations and this is an opportunity based on some information in that report, how they can continue to do that better. A quick slide for you, this is what force looks like. So as I showed at the top, compliance holds. You know, this is, I will say that this is not necessarily common in policing across the United States. There is a, um, uh, for whatever reason, policing has gone to the electronic control weapon, the taser, uh, uh, quickly as a means of, of, of utilizing force. So in, in here in, in Patterson, you don't see that, right? Only certain individuals in the Patterson Police Department have that instrument, but that instrument can be overused. And so these are, these are, not, these are good signs for you that the way force is used here in Patterson. Compliance holds, hands and fists, chemical irritants, that's like a spray. That's, that's a tool that's rarely used in a lot of police departments, and uh, it's an effective tool, and it doesn't have some of the other damaging, uh, you know, the opportunities that, that, the bad opportunities that could come with the use of electronic control weapons and so forth. Let me talk about use of force policy for a minute. So we were very fortunate that the New Jersey AG's office had adopted many of our guidelines. So the recommendations that we have fall in line with what's been mandated to the department and they've run with those, uh, those particular guidelines. So it focuses on human life, that, that value of life, that sanctity of life. It requires officers to intervene when they see wrongdoing. Uh, PPD has implemented a number of these recommendations and they put these in place. So once you implement those policy changes and recommendations, the next step is to ensure training and they're moving down that road right now. I'll go into that in a second and then you have to ensure accountability. So that's that third piece, right? Look at your policy, make it really effective, train your cops, let them know what's expected of them, and then third and last, hold them accountable when those things go astray. So those are the key pieces that they're focusing on. Uh, training, this is an important piece, folks. We have to invest in policing. If we don't invest in policing, then I'm telling you it's gonna go wrong. Uh, so, so where do we invest? We have, to, we have to look at what we provide to these officers you know, the, the department and all officers in the state of New Jersey are going through some de-escalation training that we as an organization created. They're also going through something called active bystandership for law enforcement. That's a duty to intervene. That's another type of training they will go through. There needs to be some strengthening of, of field training. You know, that's your investment. That's your new officers where they need to understand the culture of this agency. And what that means, right now you're doing the basic training and there's opportunity to do more. And that's, that's gonna take time. You know, that, that most agencies are doing months of training with a new recruit and, and there's an opportunity to improve in that level. And then you can't shortchange on training for sergeants and above. It's a very important tool of your police department and you've got to invest. And that means putting money toward those type of things. Planning an organization. So this is uh, some of the areas that we looked at. You know, there's opportunity to create some good strategic work plans in the department, focus on things like focused policing, that's intelligence led, community engagement, a healthy workforce. You also need to look at ex an extensive look at civilianization. So we identified in the report a number of places that the department can look to civilianize and then take those resources and put them in the field where they should be, but also professionals who are in that civilian world can add to the police department. Um, those, those plans and, and, and how to evaluate and create those plans are all included in our work and our information to the police department. You know, we looked at the organizational structure and alignment of the department. It's not out of the norm. You know, there's most things in this police department that other large urban police agencies are doing and providing. Um, what you don't have is you don't have a lot of documentation that shows the performance pieces of each of these units. So we've, ex we've, we've shared with the department how to create those and how to build that, those performance indicators so you know what's working and what's not working. You know, cops know it in their head, they'll say, I know this works, I know this doesn't work, but the data helps. And, and that's how you substantiate. When you say we need additional resources, you need to back that up and you need to have the technology that can allow them to do that. 
Your work schedules aren't out of whack. You know, most of your agency is working a, a uh, either a, a almost a 12-hour shift, 11.25, or they're working an eight-hour shift. Uh, when it comes to patrol, you know, we find that for, for best resources, most patrols either work in eight or it's work in 12. A 10-hour shift actually requires more manpower. So you're, you're leaning more toward that 12-hour shift, um, and those resources are being utilized. Uh, span of control varies across the agency, right? So there are some places that, that um, uh, in, in specialized functions where a first-line supervisor has a whole lot of people reporting to them, sometimes upwards of 12 people. That's a lot. But what I can tell you, and, and so that's something that we shared with them, how to examine that. We've given them examples on how to look and prepare those type of reports. And we've provided opportunities where, where they can look and, and, and kind of dig into that a little deeper. The other thing is when you look at patrol supervision, patrol supervision oftentimes across the United States is lacking. You could have up to 15 officers working in the field and only have one sergeant available. That's scary. If we expect supervisors to respond to the scenes, if we expect supervisors to investigate use of force, if we in, uh, uh, in, uh, expect supervisors to provide that guidance in the field, then they have to be available. They have to be working. And so the way you currently have resources, you, you do have several lieutenants and sergeants working, but that's not a bad thing. You know, you want those supervisors in the field. You want them providing that accountability and that performance structure in place. So, you know, once you have these things in line, you look at implementing some data-driven policing, you, you, you drive these resources to the right place, and you're going to see continued benefits with that. Real quick on infrastructure. You know, we looked at your CAD RMS, uh, great improvements with regards to that. This is going to allow you to continue to obtain data. Your fleet is aging. I'll be frank with your fleet. Half of your fleet is over eight years old, 48 of your 219 or 15 years of age or older. You know, and your detective to car ratio is five to one. That would be very unusual in policing. Those are old cars. You know, this is a, an urban city environment. Those cars are going to run 24-7. And so we've, we've shared some ways that you can develop plans so that you as a council know, hey, here's our car situation. Here's how fast we expect to go through these vehicles. And you can develop a plan going forward on how to ensure that you have proper vehicles available for the officers. Your public safety complex, I'll be very frank. Uh, it, it was a very, it's a very poor structure. Uh, your furniture, no women's lockers, water damage. I could, I'll be frank, I could go on and on and on. But this isn't something, I'm not telling you something new. You're familiar with this. There are studies on that. Um, when, when you have to invest, right? You have to invest in policing. You also have, you know, this is a morale issue to some degree. Cops are coming to work. They're having to paint their own environment. I'm having to bring a chair from home. This isn't a good situation. I'm bringing a desk from home so I have a good working desk as an investigator in your department. This is, this is not a, a, a best a practice for a large urban police agency such as Patterson. So you need to invest in some type of long term. OPS has made many improvements, okay? Many improvements have been implemented. You know, you're, you're doing stuff. Uh, there's, a, there's information that's available online. You do need to, to look at uh, data entry within OPS. In other words, detectives, as when we were here, they're getting tied up on duties other than investigating complaints. That's a problem. You know, when you have a detective who's having to do background checks, when you have a detective that's following up on COVID context, when you have a detective that's spending half their day doing data entry, that's a misuse of time and effort. So you gotta look at that, you know, we, we talked to them about uh, uh, getting those resources so you can do data entry, stop doing some of these other tasks, look at some type of human services director to, to provide services such as this, you know, when you have to do um, backgrounds and so forth on, on uh, current applicants, okay? Uh, another practice in our business is moving internal affairs out of headquarters. And that's so people in the community feel comfortable going to that location, talking to investigators, so consider that, and we've got some information on that going forward. Uh, one of the last things with OPS is you've really improved your early intervention system. And that's looking for officers that, that are going astray. And you've got good information on, it used to be you only looked at force. Now you're looking way beyond force. You're looking at sick leave abuse. You're looking at missing court. You know, there's, there's so many things that we could look at in policing to, to identify a cop that's going down the wrong road. And when we identify that, we want to try to bring that back and fix it, or we have to address it through some type of internal affairs procedure. Uh, communication is transparency. 
you know, what I would say is the, the community has an opportunity to share and that they do a good job. We, we've talked to many of your community members, some of your community leaders. They are expressing what their wants and needs are to the police department. But you have a continued opportunity there. You know, you can survey your community. You can talk. You can use some of your, your folks that are here in the city that are well respected and have them talk to your community members and share that information back to the police department and enhance those relationships. Uh, agency wide, you can improve your website. You know, a lot of people today, they'll go to the internet, they'll look on your website, they'll identify information. If they want to compliment or make a complaint, they'll do it on your website. And right now, your website is a little behind the times. You're making efforts, right? OPS is doing a good job of putting additional information on there. But there's additional opportunities like putting your policy and so forth and your information about use of force. So what do you do moving forward? You know, here, you know, we've had an opportunity to review these recommendations with the department. You need to assign responsibility. Right now, I think that's going to be Chief Ribeiro, and he's going to be responsible for leading a team that says of these you know, whatever, two-thirds that still have either work to do or haven't been done, how do we do these things? And then come up with a game plan, come up with a strategy, and if those things require resources or funding, then they come back to you and have that conversation during the course of that budget process. Your, all your cops are getting training on ICAT, which is Integrating Communication Assessment and Tactics. You need to enhance that culture in the department. You need to make sure those things are working and continue that, because that'll be a cornerstone, a cornerstone of your agency moving forward. We would talk about implementing performance management systems. It's like a, a data-driven process, a CompStat process, if you will, where cops are looking at performance, they're, they're talking about accountability issues, and they're sharing that information. And then, as we said, we've given you an opportunity to look at a lot of your resources here in the agency and determine what you can do um, with regards to civilianizing some of those things and, and, and freeing up officers to do other things, but at the same time, having professionals do things like IT and human resources and budgeting and so forth. Like, uh, so yeah. I'll end with that. Okay. Uh, Council President. Ask uh, for the floor. Yes, Council President, I have a couple of questions. Okay, yep. Councilman Abdelaziz. I'm gonna turn on the lights. You're good on that. Turn the lights Thank on. you. Mr. Wilson, for your presentation, I have a couple questions for you. Um, obviously, you highlighted the issues and the disparities when it comes to use of force, and I'm hoping the recommendations that you give the administration and the police administration uh, for more training for our officers definitely needed. I'm going to segue to organization and management. I didn't hear much about the organization, I, I did see that you put some things in there. Are you, and I'm looking at your recommendations. Do you think our current, you know, I hope you looked at and what we could do better and how we could do better. And the current schedule, the four on, four off, you think that's the most efficient and the most feasible, fiscally responsible way of running our schedule? Because I know many police departments throughout the, uh, throughout the state do not follow that. So did you look at that and what, what, how is that benef benefiting us currently if that's a, the, the um, schedule that you feel is best fit for this city? Mm -hmm. So when you, when you look at staffing, if you look at, at five eight-hour tours or you look at uh, four 12-hour tours, you have 11.25, so you're just short of that 12. Uh, five eight-hour tours is 20, 80 hours in a year. and your 12 hour tour, your 11.5 hour tour, comes out to be about 20, 50 hours, okay? So in policing, when we've looked at these two different tours, the most, for the most efficient use of resources is traditionally either eight hours or 12 hours. 10 hours is not the most efficient use of your time and your resources. So eight or 12, 12 the problem with 12 is 12 can be very taxing on the officers. It can be tiring. And if you've got officers doing extra duty assignments, so if they're working beyond that 12 hour tour and they're working 16 hours a day, uh, they're turning around, getting eight hours of sleep and coming back to work, that can be very taxing on the individual. So I think before you even look at, or, or as an agency, you, you say we need X number of officers or we need to work a specific time frame. 
I think you need to use what is now new resources to you, your CAD and RMS system, to look at that data which wasn't available before and find out what your officers are doing when they're doing it and so you can determine the most effective time. So here's what I mean by that. You, you, you don't need to deploy resources the same 24 hours a day. In policing, almost all across the United States, about two or three o'clock calls for service go up, nine o'clock calls for service start to drop off. Okay, and can you that's, check Patterson's data with that? Nine Patterson's, o'clock, my phone starts ringing. Pa- Patterson's, Patterson's data is, is, is not unlike most agencies. I mean, these are, do, do you have more serious calls? Of course you do. Yeah, of course you do later in the evening. Yeah, you do. But, but you don't, at this point, there's never been uh, enough analysis of your data, and now you have the technology to do that. And instead, I will, tell, I will share with you this. Um, instead of doing one staffing study, the best approach is to make sure you have the technology in place and then teach your cops how to conduct those staffing studies and we provided that information in this report how to do that so that you can continuously do that. And I'll, I'll tell you why. If you look at 2020 data, it's not great data, compliments of COVID. If you look at 2021 data, it's not going to be good data. So you're going to need new data going forward that says, what is driving our calls for service in Patterson? What time do those things happen? And then how many resources are we putting on those? You know, in, in Patterson, at least historically, as we talk to cops, there's somewhat of a culture of not everyone calls out on a call for service. You know, supervisors may not call out that they're on a particular call, so that data is not in that system. So you're not aware of all the hours spent on these things. Did, did you, now, I don't know what this, how this all, I'm look, reviewing it, and yeah. did you review that data? Did you review what, what, who, what, how a call service is being handled? Did you review how, from what I'm hearing, I'm on the outside, but yeah. your, your company came yep. in and was supposed to do an audit. Did you review well, how regular call service is handled? Does it go from dispatch? Does a sergeant follow through with the patrol officer after the call? At the end of the day, the operational stuff that, and the, and the, and the management. Did you review we, that? We discussed that with your people, yes. And there's no changes that you think could, uh, what's the process? Is the process good as is? Your, or your process is, is normal in policing. That call comes into the 911 center. It's generated to a, to a dispatcher. The information is put out to a patrol officer. The officer responds to that scene. So, it, so that information, now keep in mind, that data, the data that's in your CAD system is important. That's the data that helps you realize, so we can talk to people and, we, and they can walk us through a process, but the data itself has to show that. Has to, has to prove this is the amount of time we spend on certain things. Does our system, when you reviewed it, show you what's the average time for a call service in the city? Uh, we didn't go into that, no. So we, you, looked at, you, we looked at your total number of calls for service, but we were not, part of this contract was not to do a staffing study. So a staffing study would require that particular information, well, how long they were on that call, well, but our interviews that, indicated that, that data may not be that's not, and, and we're gonna i'm asking because i don't know when we got an audit in front of us and i'm looking at organization management because i'm letting you know what i hear from my residents right that that's i don't know that you know the average time does a does an officer tell you when he gets there when it's out is, is are they are they reviewing that stuff um and i don't know if your company did an overall assessment when it comes to calls of service the director or Council President, I just, just want to add, uh, as we said, as Mr. Wilson has said, we've been communicating, and that's why everyone is here from the executive staff. You know, he brought up so many good points for us, Councilman, like, look at 123 Main Street. We may go there 50 times in a month. What we need to start doing is crunching that data and finding out why are we going to 123 Main Street? Is it a police issue? Is it a human services issue? Is it a mental health issue? Is it something we can do to better police the city of Patterson by being dragged to 123 Main Street or Broadway or wherever we're going for 50 and 75 calls every single month? And instead of just throwing the police car at it, and it's a mental health, get an ambulance, get that person to the hospital. 
We need to fix the problem. So, so we've talked about a lot of these things, and I don't want you to think that it wasn't, it went on deaf ears. We've been uh, communicating no, no, and sitting I'm, and crunching. No, director, I'm not. Um, I just wanted on, you to know I'm that we did have fears. good conversations. I just, you know, when yeah. you hear police audit, of course. I'm going to bring some of the concerns that Absolutely, I get from, from my constituents. I just so wanted you I'm to know at, that. I'm looking at page 24, back to Mr. Wilson, right? Because with all due respect to our administration, right? And, and this is not to the police department. This is an audit about your department. I hear, I could go to public safety committee and hear it from you guys. I could pick up the phone and call from you guys. He's supposed to be the independent person that we paid to tell me some things I may not be hearing from you guys. So that's why I'm asking these questions. Now, on page 24, did you make any recommendations? So you say you didn't do anything with staffing. You, did you make any recommendations on how to, with staffing that maybe, like for example, I'm not a police person, but I'm just gonna use my, from what I get from our constituents, I'm sure some of my council cause. On page 24, um, we have more lieutenants on the day shift than the night shift. Looking at data, I didn't see the data. You make a recommendation, say maybe we should have more officers on at night than during the day. Uh, page 24 says, yeah, patrol day, we have four lieutenants for two captains, and you go to night, you got two lieutenants. So I, I, did you make any of those recommendations? Uh, are we looking at that stuff? So, so that, keep in mind, as, as we got this data, that's some degree of a moving target. In other words, there may be a vacancy at a particular time in nature. What you have allotted to day and evening with supervisors, we don't have a concern with, and I'll explain why. So having first-line supervisors, having commanders available to respond out over the course of that 24 hours is a good thing. There's too many places across the country that don't have supervisors available, and they don't have the opportunity to provide that guidance to your officers. So what I would tell you is that we did not do a particular staffing study. That was not what we were asked to do. You do need to do that as an organization. We have provided how to do that. And now you have the resources to be able to get that information and move forward. Thank you, and Madam BA, I actually thought this audit would look at how we run the police department, right? Uh, from an outside perspective. perspective. Um, and that, that missing in here does, th th gives me a lot more questions, right? And, and like I said, I have a great working relationship with the police department. I could call them for a lot of information. The whole point of bringing an audit is, uh, it's like our financial audit, right? He comes in and keeps our CFO accountable. I thought your, this audit will give us some staffing things that maybe we're a little top heavy during the days. Or, how many, do, do you look at any positions that could be uh, civilian positions that we have officers in that we could did. be on the streets? Yeah, we What's did. What's the number? So, so Councilman, I, I will share this with you. I don't think you're at a place for us to come in and say you have three positions or four positions. I think you're at a place where you actually need to do such an extensive review and use the data that you need to dig deeper than three or four positions. You need to dig deeper than go, how many cars do I need to fix, Mr. Wilson? You need to look at your entire fleet and say, how can we make those improvements? So our suggestion is you need to use the tools that we provided here, and we'll continue to provide that resource to your department to take your technology and start to dive into that information. So that's what we were able to provide to you. We, you didn't have that resource available. You do now, and that's what we would suggest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that, is that it? Yeah, Thank you, I'm, Councilman. I'm uh, Councilman Velez. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Yes, sir. Mr. Tom Wilson, I don't, I don't want to take a lot of your time, but um, with all your respect, this audit to the police department, there was a press conference, and I think it was ordered in 2019? It was in 2020, sir. 2020? Yes, sir. So it started in 2020 and ended it when? Uh, I would say probably it, it, it's not ending. We're here to provide the information, but we'll continue to support your agency. What's, okay, one, so. One second, Councilman. Yeah. What's, what's the noise? Uh, they probably, yeah, they, the Batman is calling. Uh, uh, That's a bus. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably uh, they go to the back way. Probably they go to toilet to back way. An important situation now. But um, so 2020 started. Correct. I recall in that press conference that it was going to take six months to do the audit. Six months. And to report back to this administration and to this council the results of the audit. I don't have short memory. I could remember everything that this mayor has said in press conference. 2020 and we're in 2022. Yes, we, sir. We, we, and you said it's still all going. Are you still charging the city for that audit? The charge to the city was a flat fee, sir. A flat fee? Yes. So that fee. six months of uh, f starting and finalizing the audit to report back is still ongoing? So if you, I think if you look at our, propo our proposal, we'd hope to finish that, the job in nine months. I don't think we said six months. Well, our proposal said nine. Nine. Um, you had a very unique situation with COVID and creating some delays. So about May of last year, we started supplying some draft reports to the city to be able to have discussions. And then we'd hope to, as soon as COVID backed down, to come in and do this in person. That didn't work out the, the few times. Fortunately, we're at a place that we can do that now. But we do not have a need to say there is an absolute end date to what we do. OK, so they, for you, it was nine months. And that's what the, the contract or whatever it says. But they say six months to finalize the audit and come back to us to report. Now, you just stated that you release information to bring it to discussion. That never happened with us as a governing body. Understand. All right? So I'm not going to put that in your fault. You know, you, you got paid for it, though. But um, you said in your statement with Councilman Nada Laziz that to be able to do analysis and, 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 and force police force, you needed to have real data and the data from 2020 and 2021 was not good enough for you to do a analysis in, in, in the force? That, in that data was on was paper records. Those paper records could be very difficult to read. As we say in the report, we couldn't understand some handwriting. The reports weren't fully completed. So there is some analysis that you see in here. And that analysis is based on the best of our review of that well, data. Well, I don't see analysis. That's why I don't see an analysis. I'm seeing a script that you're putting up there and talking general about those uh, audit that you did about force. But let me, let, me, let, me, let me back up here a little bit. When you say the data was not good, yeah. and if I look at the crime records, and we've been record, crime record was being 20 and 21 have been record crimes in the city, and shootings and et cetera and other things and above, why that is not analyzed to include in this audit? If, if, Are if you asking about the crime data? Yeah. That wasn't asked of us. That was not? No, I, I, as I put up on that first slide, we were asked to look at five different areas, sir. Now, keep in mind when it comes to crime data, we saw some anomalies across the United States with 2020 and 2021. So I think you're going to see some changes going forward. But I will also share with you that in those 95 recommendations, there are ways and means and tools that we have shared with how to better analyze that data, how to better track crime, how to, as the director said, identify the places that are driving the crime issues, the quality of life issues within Patterson, and then put the resources So we got in that. So yeah. more likely this audit to analyze our community, basically, to see how they get along with the police and this and that, right? So you, to see how they could improve the relation, I, et cetera, et cetera. So, I wouldn't say that. So use of force policy, use of force policy, so you don't have enough, enough data to analyze that use of force when we have, in 2020, 2020 and 2021, we have police shooting, uh, police involved shooting. No, no, no. So, no, so hold on, that's, no. that's use of force. Yeah. Okay, that's, and, that's not correct though. Uh, uh, so, so there's there's use of force data in this report. If you look through, and you go to, I'll give you the page number, sir. Um, it's starting on. It's starting back at page 33, and there's charts and graphs that talk about force, 
Give me not, the, not give, give me the title of the page because I don't see the number of the page. It's page 33 of the. Give me the page, the title of the page because there's no number in the page. I don't. Are see you it. looking think, at that or are you looking at the yeah. report, sir? I look. Oh, they no, never give the me the report. Oh, there you go. You. All right. There see, you go. That's a good audit. Okay. Audit that's a who? good audit. So page. <laughs> So on page let, 33, let me let, let me so you back might up. want to read that, sir, because Sorry. there's a, there's some extensive data in there. They gave me this, but as you notice, they brought us we, right away. We sent the report, sir. OK, so I'm going to go base what you say there yeah. in that in that podium. I, this is going to take me time to analyze it. And I could bring it back to to my uh, public safety committee. A lot of things that you say there. I heard it before in our public safety committee is nothing new. Nothing new that you say there is nothing new that we need cards that we need a good building We did a tour at the police department building at the request of the um, The deputy chief uh, and the personnel of the building. We did a, a nice extensive walkthrough through Through that building it was nauseous. I would not bad. You know, it's bad. But it's that's some of the worst I've ever seen, sir, to be Correct. Uh, let me tell you, I could invite you other buildings in the city, probably is worse, too. But um, everything that you have said, our director of uh, public safety, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Walfine, uh, Director Jerry Sousia, have numerous times told us what they need. They need equipments, car, new building. They need... Uh, better pay, more police officer, we need to treat them good. In the legislative part, I could recall that we have given all those tools. It's up to them, that shed that you see empty there, to put it to work. And when I say that empty chair, I'm talking about the mayor of the city of Patterson. He's the administrator of this city. Now. I'm looking at, at what you said, right? I had to review this. Yes, sir. Right? Can yeah. you describe in the use of force without me reading this, because I didn't notice they gave it to me late. Um, in the bottom says all the force, and it's 23.2%. What kind of force is that? Which page are you looking at, sir? On your PowerPoint, on the top, oh, the use of force. Yes. I don't on that on that PowerPoint that was showing the types of force. Okay, so the compliance so hold. Compliance the compliance hold, hold yeah. is the individuals that drunk. You hold them and they compliance. Yes, sir. Uh, hands and 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 fists. That means they use their feet and hands, not to beat it, them up, to control them. They, right. It means they probably use their hands. It could be a strike to uh, gain compliance. So chemical natural agent is the uh, pepper spray or whatever, yes, right? Sir. Correct. Yes. Um, kicks and feet again. Mm. Oh, feet. It's okay. Striking and baton or, or whatever object they use. But when you say other force, can you tell me what kind of force is that? No, I can't because that's how they document it. So how you audit a, a force and others? We, we provide you the best we can. And when we, when we ask those questions, that could be an officer who chooses that block, other force? Correct. We, don't, we, we can't provide an answer to that. Now, so, what I can so, tell so you. Based, based on the new order from the Supreme Court that AG, allow us to uh, get the reports of internal affairs. Attorney fear. General's office, yes, sir. Correct. So you, that's going to be You're going to have drop downs that are going to provide better information. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's go to infrastructure, right? Um, are you on the slide? Uh, yeah, on the slide. Because if I go through this once again, as you notice, they just brought it here, and I don't want to go over it, then you had, I had to pay you a little bit more. So, I know. OK, let's go to communication transparency. I, I, you already answered the one I was going to ask for that one. Um, you stated that. The communication transparency, and you say engage trust and skilled community and SACS agency, well, you say it up there. But at your statement, you say that's a job that Chief Rivero have to do. And I believe Chief Rivero is the deputy chief still. Why do you say Chief Rivero? 
So what I'm referring to, I'm just uh, removing the deputy part. I'm, I'm familiar with his role. I just want to keep the yeah. record clear. Correct. That we still have deputy chief Rebel. We still have a uh, chief of the police as chief Correct. of Cora. So in the policing world, we frequently do that, sir. I don't want them to My take, mistake. I don't want them to thank you. I Understood. just want to clear that in the record. So I was saying that Deputy Chief Ribeiro will help lead the effort looking at those 95 recommendations going forward. If that so helps. this is the audit that you did towards the police department? Yes, sir. And actually is an audit of operations? It's an audit of five areas that I showed at the beginning, and those are the five areas we were asked to look at. Fair enough that you did this audit to Tom Wilson. Um, and your company well, they were our organization. It's organization. not a Tom Wilson audit. Tom, no, it's directed, the Police Executive I, Research I, Forum. I'm directing it to you, Tom Wilson, yes, sir. on behalf of your company. Yes, sir. If I'm going to add, read all this, mm -hmm. to, and you're going to be honest with me, after what, this question, then I'm going to go and read this and analyze it to compare what you're going to tell me now. If you have to grade the Patterson Police Department from A to F, what grade you will give them, based on your audit? One, one grade will not work, sir. Here's what I will S tell you. S sir, I, I, I will tell you that they have outstanding personnel who want to do the right thing. I will tell you that they're limited on resources. I will tell you that they're operating with some very poor equipment. I will tell you they're operating in a very poor environment, and that's going to affect officer wellness, morale, and well-being. And I think that if you look at those 95 recommendations, you have an opportunity to take what I would say is a good police department, and you have an opportunity to make them a better police department. And I understand that you don't want to grade them, but probably, um, and I'm making myself clear, I'm going to use the same example if I had my son and I give him a pen, a pencil, book bag, I understand and, uh, what you're a looking book, for, and sir. a book to go to school. And I give him all the resources to give me come back with good grades, right? I give him all of that, and then he come back with bad grades. What's going to happen? I'm giving you everything. I'm going to take away this, but I, you know, this and that. So I'm going to discipline them more to perform better, right? So I'm not sure that book bag's full for them, sir. To be very frank, I just say I'm treating it like it was my kid, sir. Yeah. You know, I, you know. Let me tell you something. With well, all your respect, sir. I know you probably cannot disclose everything that you have found in this police department. They're a well fine individual. The morale have been down because the way that this administration has been treating them, okay, it's not your fault. We pull resources to this police department. We, put all, uh, we approve a lot of grants. We approve a lot of money for them. You know, something is going on. And part of that. But something's going on. And if you, don't, if you guys don't want to come back out clear for we could be more accessible for them, and now we'll let you lay the part. Whatever they put us to, to help them out, we will do it. And the director, director could testify that when he comes to our public safety meeting. We need this. You need to approve this, please, because we need it. We are there for them. But we want to know really, really, when we, as Councilman Adelacy says, when we receive an amount of calls or complaints of police, of, towards the police, and we here trying to defend this side and try to defend the other side and meet in the middle to see how we can improve our police department. Because everything that you could find should be reflected out there with the calls that we receive. I know they're trying to do the best. If they have to be a, if they have to be a change of leadership, if they have to be a change of something, you know what I'm saying? Espe especially, so hold on, sorry. Please especially, don't talk back from the audience, please. Especially, I haven't touched the part of communication, but once again, I gotta be fair. I gotta, I gotta look, I gotta read on this page by page. And probably if, if your phone number is around, probably I could have a sidebar for, with you. And, um, and I will tell you our experience the experience of the constituents out there, and um, and I will tell you why they don't have to improve them, and that that don't that don't come from us. 
that come from the administration. And, and, and one of the thing is that when I see, and that's what I say, uh, Mr. Rockers, when I see that you have performed an audit, I, I want to see how many, how many, how many reports you have, and what kind of uh, situation was to make a, a clear, a clear judgment in what happened and what needs to be done, because in 2020 and 2021 there was and still <clears throat> there's family back there waiting for response from situation that happened in the city that we want to know how they manage it man, to be able to have answers to them and this side if we had to correct something we would correct it from this side but if they i'm not saying they this over here section of the administration don't allow us to know what's going on. There's not much we could do. Just to pass the ball back and forth and have a report Con like this just Con to satisfy the ears of the people. Con Councilman. Council, pre Council President, thank you. Thank you. Councilman Mims. Thank you, Councilman Jackson, for being a gentleman. Allow me going first tonight. So your name is Tom Wilson? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so first let me apologize to the public. I did communicate to um, my secretary that I would be late. I had to make sure my son was picked up from college um, tonight. So I just have a question. What was the original scope of the project? What was the purpose, the sure. intent of doing the audit? We did, and I want to bring clarity, we did get this packet in our, um, in our mail on Friday. Um, it is 88 pages long. Not sure if it's enough time from Friday till now uh, to read all of the information, but I still, in reading it, right, I, I read all 88 pages and some of the recommendations, but I wasn't clear on the scope of what you were looking to find, because when you're doing um, an audit, right, it's an assessment to identify issues, concerns, strengths, weaknesses, right, you do SWOT analysis and all types of things. I didn't really see a lot of the issues, for example, Tonight, and I thank Chief Bacora. I had a young lady that called. They had an accident. They were waiting for two, two hours for someone to come to the scene of the accident. Two hours. And I had to call the chief. Now, they had called into dispatch. They did what they are supposed to do. But I don't see those type of things. And I think that's what a part of what Councilman Abdelaziz was talking about. So I just am trying to understand the intent of the audit. Is the intent of the audit just to provide an overall assessment of what's happening in the police department, or are you doing an assessment to identify some of the concerns and how we can address it from an outside perspective, or is it collaborative? Like, are you working in alignment with the police department to, to define it? I'm, I'm just trying to understand how this was done. So the, the proposal that we submitted focused on these five areas, on the organizational structure, that broader organizational structure. How does it work? How does it set up? Does it function? Does it work? Is it, is it you know, normal for policing. We looked at accountability measures. That's on use of force. That's on IA processes. That's as a department in general. You know, how do they track crime and how do they track information just like you're talking about? We looked at policies, procedures, training, community relations, transparency. So what you're asking is, is what we found is there's not a lot of systems in place to document that information. What we provided them was extensive information on how to do that going forward, to do a better job of documenting that information and making that information easier to track. For example, if you don't have good technology that captures your call data or how many reports you're generating, and if those things aren't in place and if they're paper driven, which they've been for a long time here in Patterson, like use of force, when we looked at use, actual use of force documentation, this was handwritten paper forms that we had to at sometimes guess on what they were saying because we couldn't read mm -hmm. the writing. So we've given them ways and means to improve that going forward. So we identified through 95 recommendations, ma'am, specific areas that you can fix. For example, the policies, specific language changes that you should put in play, specific training that you should put in play ways that you can improve communication and transparency. So are you, I, I, I wanna get clarity. So there is a system, 
one system in particular. There are other systems, but there is a system called the CAD system. Are you familiar with the system? Yes. So are you saying there's no agent detail report for the CAD system that identifies the calls that come through, the frequency of, of the call time, how long they waited, the duration? No, there there's is. no report? No, yes, okay. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But that's not what we said right. we would do. We're so, not, we didn't go so, into that so just level of detail. So yeah. that, that's why I'm asking, yeah. right? I saw your five areas, so I'm mm -hmm. someone that read it. I'm not speaking from fluff. I read it. So that's why I'm asking with what has been identified, I don't see stuff like that, right? We have, do we need other systems? Yes, right? We have some antiquated stuff. We've talked about it with the director. There's a lot of antiquated stuff. And we've been working even with the consolidation and building a new state of the art facility, which is a great thing. And there are some that are needed. But when I don't see in an audit, some of the systems that are in place that we say, in the CAD system, we ran a report and we noticed if someone called for an accident, it took four hours, it took three hours, it took whatever, the priority level is X, Y, Z, so we're recommending maybe if whatever that looks like, that's what I'm asking. But I mean, who gave you the five points? Is it something you came up with or the administration? Who, who came up with the five we points? We responded to an RFP that was focused in these areas and then our RFP identified what we would do. So what you're talking about is actually a very specific staffing study. Mm -hmm. The staffing study would dive into calls for service, how long you're there, what type of calls they are, what's driving your workload. What we provided you, because we didn't have, that's not what we were asked to do, that's not what we said we would do. So we let provided me, you a way to be able to do that. So I'm gonna put on, on the floor, that's what's needed. Not saying this other, what's in these 88 pages is not needed. Mm -hmm. When we as council members get calls from our constituents, they're upset because they've been waiting for an officer. They're upset and um, I don't wanna even, even last night I needed an officer I, and I had the police and the sheriff come. I had to call both to my house for a racist remark that was sent to me. And I needed the officer and I was grateful because they had on their body cams and I video recorded them because I was so impressed that they were on. But I'm just saying, what happens when our constituents call? They call us, they call, I, I'm upset and they're yelling, they're screaming. Sometimes we go to the actual location, we call and I'm grateful, our director, our chief, they respond to us, they, they respond. But that's something we need. We need, if we do a new RFP, if they need to amend this one, we need to have a call to service audit because if we're gonna help our police department get better, right, because that's what this is about, correct? Or become more efficient, is that what this pur the purpose? Yes. Then that should be something that's identified. It shouldn't just be these five points, which I think are great, but we have to really dive into some of the areas or some of the concerns that we've been facing as Patterson community. Because I saw a lot of things that are uh, statistically driven by a national level, but I don't really see some of the statistics like yesterday there were two shootings or the day, like I wanna see stuff like that driving in these reports so we can really say, how do we need to help? Do we need to increase uh, the teacup? Do we need to, like all of that stuff should be here because it really helps us as a council and it helps the police department and because they need help, right? And we keep saying they need help, they need equipment, they need cars. This report should be very clear, concise, we shouldn't even have to kind of wonder or request additional things, especially basic things like call to service. That's what I'm saying to the administration that um, is a recommendation that this should be amended or extended, whatever needs to be done, but that should be a priority in this report, especially with the concerns in our community and with the summer coming. I'm, I'm almost nervous with this, this beautiful weather is great, but I'm almost nervous what's gonna happen with our kids in, in the city of Patterson. So that's to the administration, um, not specifically to you, because you did what you were required to do, but I'm just saying to the administration, I think it's something that needs to be added to the RFP. Thank you. So thank you very much, Councilwoman Mims. Just to bring you, bring you up a little to speed, um, I have been meeting with uh, DCA once a month uh, and it's actually something that's already in the works, the staffing study, because that was actually a question that we had in the Public Safety Committee when it was presented to us, and that's when he brought up the five areas of review 
based on the RFP that they answered to and that's what they covered. The staffing uh, review, uh, to my understanding, is something that with the administration, and I know we've been talking about this, that it may necessarily not be someone from the outside, somebody from within. I mean, come on, we have some high-ranking officers that I believe that can do that job. And so that's another conversation, but I do know because in, uh, I believe it was two months ago, am I correct, Madam BA? Uh, that was actually something that was part of the agenda, which was the staffing study. So council. it hasn't been brought up to the council yet because there was a conversation, should it be something that it should be internal? Or should it be something, you know, that you go out for another RFP? And I know that you mentioned that as well, Mr. Wilson, that you said that wasn't part of it, but it could be that it could be somebody internal, not necessarily have to go out and spend another $100,000 to do a staffing study. I think, once again, I'll repeat by saying that um, I know, you know, since I became the council president July of 2021, I had a meeting July 6th and I brought in the chief and the director and captains and lieutenants and we talked about, okay, we can't tell, this council cannot tell the, the police department what they need. They need to come and tell us. And then we have to determine through, well, through the administration, obviously, and the administration brings it to us. And I know that part of that does have to uh, have some monies attached to it, but not necessarily uh, when doing, you know, the bigger plan. So to what you're saying, mm -hmm. um, I totally agree, but I just wanted you to know, I don't want anyone here to think that that is a recommendation that's coming out of here today. That's been a recommendation actually that came from a few months ago, actually since last year. And I do believe that Deputy Chief Ribeiro is one of the individuals that was identified as someone that was supposed to be preparing, you know, some reports to bring forth to the administration. So council president, just to piggyback, so to Patterson, I want you to hear this. We received the 88 page report last Friday. It just was stated that two months ago, there was a conversation about doing what was a staffing. That's not in this document. Is not it's not supposed to be councilwoman. Council He's president, presenting the police council audit. president. I have the floor. I understand, but I you're have saying the floor. something that is not correct. It is correct. You just stated it. For two months, we knew nothing. I'm not in the public safety committee. There was no committee report that was sent out to identify this discussion. I am, for the first time, seeing an 88-page report and an overview platelet tonight. So if I'm stating to the public and asking for information, I'm asking based on what I've received. I wasn't privy to a DCA meeting. I wasn't privy to a conversation in public safety. I have not on public safety. I have the right as a council person, you may be the council president, but I am a council member at large. And I am saying tonight, this is what I saw that was not here. And so now I'm hearing there was a discussion. So just a recommendation in the future, if there are ideas or considerations that are made, we can just add it to the document so we don't have to ask, because Councilman Abdelaziz asked the same question. He talked about it before, about the staffing concerns. He said the same thing earlier, and there was no comment made. But after I made the comment, it was made that two months ago. No, Councilwoman, that's incorrect. That was not in the room, Councilwoman. You were here I had to take an you important call initially. from the hospital. That's why I was you not here. You were here when he spoke. Yes, Okay, I was not here. Don't so do that. So just a recommendation, do that. whatever that discussion was, please send ahead. that to the council as a whole, because we don't know sidebar conversations. We don't know committee conversations if we are not there. Please send it to the council as a whole so that we are up to speed and we don't have to reiterate conversations. Madam BA, I want to ask you one question. How long has the conversation of staffing study been had? How long? Well, we started the conversation with DCA. The one you're referring to was just two months ago when we first met. Okay. We know okay. that. Internally, we've been discussing it as part of the draft document that, you know, that we've been trying to address as part of staffing. Okay, and that conversation has been had with the director and the chief and deputy chiefs, am I correct? Yes. Okay. But not the entire much. council. Yep. You don't have the floor anymore. Not council the entire Cotton. Council. Okay. Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, um, um, Madam President. I want to say to Tom Willis, um, I happened to be in the meeting yesterday for public safety. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I heard 
and one of the first things that came out of the meeting was staffing uh, by Councilman Jackson. Um, did you look at the staffing, which was not part of this, which was not part of, of your review? Now, you also stated, um, you also have stated that there's 90 recommendations that you, that you found, and some of our recommendations, some of them you said that we already had in place, or we uh, had particularly started working on, on some of them. Uh, but when you sit here and read this first report, I got two reports now. The first one, you have to, to me it's not like clearly outlined, like the recommendation and the, so, like, like by the time I get to page 65, I might have forgot what I read on 10. You know, I mean, can you like look like, normally when you do a report, if I may say, they'll have the recommendation They'll have what's been implemented. They'll have what's been done. You know what I mean? Like they'll have it already laid yes, out somewhat. But, and I talked about also, we talked about community stuff. We talked about use of force. And I had said because of COVID, um, when we always had new recruits, we always did a community, especially in the fourth ward. We would go to the, to the Crossroad Ministry Center, which did not even open back yet where we would bring in the different members of the community to talk with the new officers coming on. And I would say to new officers, you've got 60 different ethnic groups in this city. They all have different personality, they all are not the same. You have to try to understand how each, each one of them is. Um, and I think that if we can even get that, but, the, but, but you also stated that there's training that, that needs to be put in place um, and the training every year. Like you can't get a, you can't become an officer in 2015 and then you don't get trained no more. Like everything, everything has changed. A lot of things changed. You got 2020, 2022. So you constantly, and you recommend that yearly, yearly, there should be some type of, of training that, that each person can, um, you know, that should have. Um, I'm not sure, but I know our 911 call center wasn't coming into our city. It was going other places. I'm not sure if we're back in, back in town yet. But I was hoping, I've been here going in my 10th year. I was hoping to get to, you ever watch 911 and them girls are sitting in front of five, six screens? You ever watch how they can track a police car from wherever they are coming from and wherever they need to go and they can track it. They can track an ambulance all the way to the house that we need to go. And I think the next thing that needs to get done is the amount of time that it takes. When people get calls me, I tell them to put the call in at the 111 number so you can have data. Because data is really important for them to understand what, what, what they need or when they need to do it. So. Um, with that, I'm not quite sure. I know our Chief McDermott had been working on that call center. I'm not sure if it's up and running yet, but, but this, I think the next thing is staffing, um, that you've got to look at it. Um, my colleagues here talked about the 12 on, the 12 off, the four days on, the four days off. Let me tell you, once you work three or four days of 12 hour shift, you're done. You're done. You, 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 you're done. You, you have to rest for at least a whole day to get your body right. So I'm not sure if that's going to ever change, but you said to do a 10-hour shift, we don't have enough staffing. We don't have enough staffing to do an 8-hour shift. So I'm not sure if we're going to stick with a 12-hour shift, but a 12-hour shift really burns out an individual because once you do three and four days of 12 hours, you're not sleeping. 12 you're not sleeping eight hours you you might sleep six hours because it's really hard to from working that way so my recommendation i would think that the call of service like i mean how long is it taken to get to that that needs to be looked at also the staffing situation i think that should be the next thing that we have to see we got 419 officers total i believe uh i'm not sure how many um What'd you say? Wait, wait, wait. There's no speaking. No, out. There's no I'm, speak not, I'm not. Out. 
Councilwoman. Yeah. Councilwoman. I just heard this the background. I know, but you know that the... the, the no, I didn't see nobody sitting there. I'm, I'm, I didn't okay, see nobody sitting over you there. Complete. I'm just saying, you heard okay. some of my concerns. I was in the meeting with you yesterday uh, with staffing. Uh, the amount of time it takes to get to, to get a call to service to someone's uh, house. Um, and one thing I said that, and I say to the administration, you have to, you have to, you have to. I've been given the same address probably for the last three months. There's no way you can continue to go to the same address week after week after week after week and nothing's been done. So that's a major, another issue that we really gotta could look into because we already know what addresses that gives us the most problems. So that's one of the pieces I say to the administration too and with the staffing. So I just want to, to share that. I don't know how you feel. Um, you have said it in the meeting, but I'm not sure about the eight hour, the 10 hour, the 12 hours. Yes, ma'am. So we, we, we talked about those and we, we talk about the challenges with the 12 hour shift and, right. and the weariness that comes with that. That's in the, in the report and there's some links to some studies on that. Madam President, let me just make sure there's pure clarity on this staffing piece. Right. Staffing is not a moment in time. And so if you look back at 2020 and 2021, you will not have valid data to determine how many cops you need and where and when. You won't. Because COVID impacted policing. What we have provided you, whether you choose to do an additional staffing study, what I can tell you is we have provided you how to do that. So the information on how to conduct those studies is here. And many agencies will use these type of guides to do that analysis on a regular basis. Okay, we're not handing you a fish, right? We're teaching you how to fish. So that information is here. And Doc, with all, all due respect, a moment in time is just that. But if we, if we have the ability, meaning we have the technology, we have the skills, which you guys have, to do this analysis, which hasn't been done in the past, but you're not, you're not alone there. Many agencies haven't done that. You have the information to do that. Thank you very much. Councilman Kalik, then Councilman Jackson. Okay, thank you, Council President. Um, I see there is 95 recommendation. Yes, sir. In your study, correct? 90 yes, sir. 90, 90 or 95? It's, I think it's 95. 95. I say over 90. To 95. the administration and to our director, uh, how are we going to implement all 95 recommendations or how many of them are in place oh. already? Nearly, I would say about 32 are complete. We have about half of these are already in motion. The rest, we are all working together. Some are such heavy lifts, like the building, I, I don't know. But we have tasked Deputy Chief uh, Ribeiro with going over the PERF report, going through the recommendations. We made our footnotes. All of the staff worked together, the executive staff, to look at these recommendations. And now we will keep on moving down that road until we get to the stumbling block. Is it too much money? Is it something we can get accomplished? Or do we need to come through the administration to the council? So there's, there's all of these recommendations, but I can tell you that there's been a good part that has been done good part that has started, and then we will complete. I, I, I have one more question. Uh, sure. Question, Council President. There's been talking about a staffing study, some of my council colleagues as well. Are you able to do that study within our department? Yeah, I think we can do a staffing study. I don't think that's a, something that's uh, not doable. I think we look, need to look at that. And another thing like Councilwoman Cotton talked about, I want to, something that really hit me from these recommendations and talking with the staff is drilling down on that, and I don't want to pick on Broadway or anywhere, let's say 500 Broadway. Why are we going there 
75 times a month and not going to the accident that's waiting for two hours right. because we're draining our resources and keep sending it to the same place, to the same place, to the same place, but we're not fixing right. that problem. Mm -hmm. It may be a problem that's not a police problem, maybe a building code problem, could be a landlord tenant problem. Right. So those are some of the things. Do I have faith that we can do it? Yes, I do, Councilman. Thank uh, you. Uh, Madam, Madam BA, Corporation Council, can we move forward with, their, with this study? That's my recommendation. Yes, and uh, Council President, if I could just speak to this Madam a little bit BA. more. Um, not only have, you know, we've been discussing this at the staff level internally, and as we, we mentioned with our fiscal monitor, the mayor, myself, <clears throat> also had a meeting with the director of local government services at the division level for DCA. And when she was here, she had one of her deputies with her, who was a former police chief, who helps with a lot of the work around staffing of Atlantic City and Camden. So that's an additional resource that has been given to us saying, we know that you're undertaking this audit. We know you've been working with PERF and you have resources. We can help support you in an internal staffing study that you guys do. We can also be another set of eyes on it. So it is something that we are about to undertake. Thank you. Great. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, um, Council President. So I'm, look, I'm just going to focus in on the areas in which you um, which you were tasked to take care of. And I'm going to point out a few of the, uh, I don't have any questions. We, we spoke at, at the uh, uh, public safety meeting. And the, the question that Councilman Abdelaziz asked, I was the first question I asked. I'm not an officer. I don't know what it means to be an officer. But when it comes to staffing, I own a restaurant. If I have busy days on Friday and Saturday, and I only have 20 servers, I know that I can't allow half of my servers to take off on half the days and where they say I'm only, I'm only capable of working these days, so therefore my busiest nights, I only have half the staff. If you do a four on, four off, the reality is it, of it is, you have to divide your staff in, in right down the middle. If only half the staff is able to work this four and half the staff is able to work that four. So there is no overlapping, so we obviously, we know that there's an issue there. The fact that we didn't, it wasn't subscribed in this audit, uh, you know, it speaks volumes. But um, I, one thing I did not pick up when we were in the um, public safety meeting was that you're a former chief, you're a former chief of police? Patrol chief. Patrol chief. Patrol chief. Yeah, so with all due fairness and all due respect to you, I mean, you did a phenomenal job, but it's kind of like getting the cat to, to review the cat that ate, ate the, uh, the cheese. We have to have an audit done by people who are impacted by the performance of the police. So, you know, we, I wrote the measure for us to have a civilian uh, review board in which we, we still have not managed to get through. But just going through some of the, act, some of the, um, the points here, the bullet points, and to Councilman Velez's point, I'm not going to ask you to give a grade because, you know, I wouldn't put you on the spot that way. But, uh, the, the department's organizational structure and management systems. I mean, obviously, we, we understand that there's some levels of uh, n need there, right? And the, to Councilman Cot Councilwoman Cotton's point, the outline basically just says we need to throw more money at the already the, the, the highest paid department within the city. The police, the PD is the highest uh, uh, cash resource that absorbing a uh, uh, department in our city. So there is no real um, an analysis on what should take place in order to cure some of these things. For example, transparency. You have a family who's been coming here consistently, consistently asking for transparency. We don't have anything, that, and, and there's nothing in the report that speaks to whether or not the department lacks in transparency, but we could see that. I'm going to talk about facts, and, and I'm really, I mean, I, I apologize for putting you through this, but I'm really kind of just addressing the public, because this is what ha has happened. This department has been consistent in its, in, its, uh, in its practices, to say that. So several years back, there was an officer who uh, went home while on duty. His, his fake address, actually, was... It was his secondary address that he was util utilizing 
to gain residency in the city to be an employee of the, of, of, of the Patterson P Police Department. While he was on duty, he went home and he was found there playing a video game. The same officer was, re, uh, was moved into a different division, a different segment of the department to try to hide him from making those infractions because that happened twice. Him being found at home happened twice. The same officer was then moved to the radio room. He was found multiple times sleeping, snoring on, t on the recorded line for six plus hours. These are facts. This is not a, a, a bedtime story. Six hours sleeping, snoring on the recorded line. Uh, the same officer was overheard by a rank and file officer and saying that he would never, based on the consent, the consent decree, he would never take orders from a N-word. I was tempted to say it, Council, Councilman. I was, sent, I was tempted to say it just to see the, if I get the same backlash as when I said something else pre previously. But the same officer said he would never take orders from an N-word. And that same officer was never reprimanded. Yet, the superior officer who took an issue with that comment and some of the practices, who then went after this officer in, from an from a, from a, a internal um, process perspective. The same officer was then suspended. The same officer who has never been blemished, who is a lifelong city resident, who worked for DPW for five years, worked for the police department for 25 years, who never had one write-up, was then forced into retirement because the department and the administration refused to allow him back to work. So when we look at this review and we see certain things, when we talk about staffing issues, when the administration feels there's a need, like when a man goes into an ambulance walking and then never makes it out, and the family comes down here for, for, to address the council for concerns, we find barricades around, the, around this building with a great deal of number of officers that's here in, in defense of what I can't tell you. So, I, needless to say, I'm, I'm extremely, um, I don't want to say disappointed because it's kind of expected. Uh, it's, what, it's what happens here. When we talk about holding a department accountable on behalf of the residents who have to pay the bill, and by the way, I did ask for, I'm surprised uh, none of my other council colleagues asked. This review did cost the city $150,000. And respectfully, because you're a professional, you deserve to be paid for what, you, what, you, what your rates are. But in the end of the day, I'm curious and I'm questioning whether or not the residents of the city got their money's worth, got the value. Because outside of telling us that we need more cars, we need more uh, resources, to, in your language, we've done nothing to actually lend a, a, a measure of comfort to the residents who the same phone call that, I, that Councilwoman uh, Mims received, I received, I just gave the director the text, when a resident is waiting two hours at an at a accident scene for a police response. And I think that if we're gonna do, if we're gonna do an audit, Madam BA, if we're gonna look at the, uh, uh, the needs and necessities for our, our community, we need to outline what does the community need? Not where there's deficiencies. We know we could use more, more cars, but there's a lot of people in this, in this community that could use you know, um, higher pay rates or safer, um, more sound uh, living situations. I'm taking calls from residents who say, listen, I got a hole in my apartment that leads outside that rats is consistently run into. But we're gonna continue to fund the highest paid department in the city. We, not, we need to know based on what, we're, what they're working with, what they have to work with, because the city's already stretched to, to its gill. Based on what we have, the resources we have to give them, how can we perform better? How can we lend a measure of comfort to the residents? How can we have more transparency, more uh, uh, accountability? You know, that's something that I would like to see within the report. I don't think that um, this report really uh, gave or, or um, cured some of the concerns of the, of the community, because I speak from a perspective of a community member. But lastly, um, 
so, so the, uh, uh, how, how, how much more time do we have left to spend to continue to evaluate or in or make um, suggestions to, to cure some of the issues here? They finished completely? We've, we've completed this review. What we're available to do ongoing is to assist the agency in continued advice, thoughts, guidance on how to implement these things. So I apologize. We're available for that. Okay. I apologize for the redundancy, but I only raise the point just so the public can understand. You know, you have the city of Camden, which is in very similar to Patterson's condition, and we have the textbook in which has already been written. They've shown how do you take a community that's suffering from high level of violent crimes, from a, a, you know, same types of conditions that Patterson is suffering from, and they've managed to cure a great deal of those issues. They've, they've decreased violent crimes by, you know, unbelievable percentages, from 60, 70%, 85% in certain areas, and they've actually done these things within a matter of a year or two. So here you have the administration that's been here. I'm sorry, Madam B.A. You have a comment? Oh, I apologize. So, anyway. So, um, so Councilman, to, to what you're saying, it's my understanding that you, uh, uh, that was actually a question that we asked uh, yeah. about Camden, if you can just share that with us, because you yeah. brought that up in, in the Absolutely. committee, and I'd like you to put that on record. And, and let me just make sure we're clear that this isn't a Tom Wilson report, sir. Right. This is an organization, our organization is, is made up, matter of fact, uh, members of our team that were on the ground here, uh, not all have policing experience. Some of them have civil rights and, and, and law backgrounds. So we have a wide variety of people to help on this. If I was to tell you about Camden, I would say Camden implemented this report four years ago, and that's why they are where they are today. So in Camden, the chief of police was our PERF president. Prior to that, it was Chuck Ramsey, president in Philadelphia, who provided some assistance to us in this. So the Camden Police Department has taken what you see in this report, in those 95 recommendations, and they've put those into practice. They've done the training. They've developed the accountability systems. But like you, they had to start somewhere. And this provided that roadmap. So I'll be frank, kudos to you as an organization willing to step up and say, let's have someone else do it. Because the reality is in policing, we get caught up with day-to-day -day fires. You know, our organizations, policing across the country gets caught up in a de dealing with day-to-day -day issues. You and, and someone else calling, asking the police department to do specific things. And sometimes we forget to step back and look at the bigger picture and say, how do we get to a better place? So what we believe that we provided you, Councilman, is that roadmap. And that roadmap has worked in Camden, as you suggested. And I think you'll see, and we would be glad to put you in touch with Camden. We would be glad to put you in touch, and we say that in here. We'll put you in touch with other organizations that have implemented these changes to see how they work. You know, when it comes to performance and accountability systems, I can put you in an agency that has put those things in place, and they work, and they help you identify these different issues, staffing, whatever that is. Is that unit working? Is that, is that, is that providing the performance that we expect here in, in Patterson? Council so, so President, so so President. Okay. Sorry, one quick with Cam. So, we'll, one second. We're gonna, we're gonna, Councilman Jackson, if you can wrap up, then Councilman Abdelaziz. Uh, we're going on almost two hours with this. Yeah. We do have a Council lot of President. people here. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Council President, okay. I just have okay. one question. Okay, uh, Councilman Jackson. So I'm gonna just say this, uh, and, and with all due respect, I appreciate your, 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 the report and I respect it, but um, in the end of the day. I want to make sure I'm totally clear about this because the perception is that you come to present this report to the council as if we have the ability to make the decision. I mean, it's just very basically a report to the to the public to talk about that. But I think members of the public often take take certain things and be and they're misguided by it as if the council we have absolutely no oversight, no uh, you know the police departments are protected by. Attorney General guidelines, privilege, and things of that nature. So when certain things happen, you know, council members don't have the privy to a lot of information and things of that nature. So I want to make sure that that's clear. Even in, even relative to this report, we didn't even have an opportunity to, to decide which areas we need right. to look at. This was done totally by the administration and the um, and the PD because 
a lot of these things we already know. We know, everybody knows the building is atrocious. In fact, it's part of the reason why our former chief is no longer here. One of his biggest pushes was we, he, t he did a tour with all the council people, his ver very, the moment he was made chief, uh, toured the building, and he was pushing for us to, 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 have a, to, to take tax credits, that's being, never mind, we won't get, to, get deep into that, that are being squandered in other places, take tax credits and put it to good use and to build a new uh, PD. And that was, that was the first thing, and next thing you know, he's being pushed out. So we know what the issues are. The fact is, the, the, the real question is, when are we actually going to take the, make the effort to make the changes necessary that the public needs to be um, <coughs> needs to receive the services that they're deserving of? I appreciate the time, Council President. Thank you very much, Councilman Jacks. I mean, Councilman Velez. Velez, thank you. Uh, you know, I was not going to ask more questions, but you, you triggered me something when you stated that you implemented this plan, the same plan in Camden and that's where they are now. So in other words, you say because they worked for Camden, I could implement it in Patterson and you did, not, did, it, did a full audit on this and you say, okay, it works in Camden, let me put it in Patterson. That's what, that's what I understood. When you say, I, think you I implemented this plan in Camden, right? So now it's working, hey, hold on. It works in, pa in Camden and that's where they are now. So Patterson, you are the same city of Camden with the same problem, the same amount of officers and the same cars, the old buildings and this and that. So this will work in Patterson. Here, you could do this. <laughs> Sir, I, I, I respect, I respect your, your experience as chief patrol officer, right? That yes. was your title? Yes. I believe that's what he said, you were. Okay. You were was the patrol the chief team. patrol. Okay. Office. In other words, you was probably the chief of only I, patrolling. I had oversight of the patrol bureau. Oh, so you was in the general chief for narcotics, this, this, all the departments. You was not the chief. You just were designated to patrol. I provided oversight to the patrol bureau. So cars and... And well, that's, that's at the end of my career. Okay. Okay. At various times, Councilman. I was the emergency manager right. for three years. All right, okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah. Wilson, okay. Mr. Wilson, one second. I'm, I'm going to ask that you not respond. Why? Councilman, I'm going to ask you to Why? please ask your question so we can close this part of the meeting so we can continue with city Okay, so, so I, have a I have a deputy chief. There's a deputy chief for patrolling and dedicate yourself in the patrol lands. So my simple question, if you have other experience working in narcotic division, et cetera, et cetera. I spent six years in narcotics, sir. Okay. I have experience in narcotics. I spent two years at the academy. I oversaw robbery. I overseen sex crimes. I could go and on. What about internal affairs? Okay. Hold on. I'm so I have the line of question no, here. No, 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 no. What no, about, no, no. I just want to know. Okay, councilman, your Councilman, expertise. You're, you're getting off task. All right, That's wrong. So, so, okay. That's wrong, Councilman. So as a chief, in your experience as a chief, when you was across the board with any elected official, you was the same with all of them at the same time? If you had to deal with them, if, a, if a, an elected official call you as a chief, do you answer the phone to all of them? Of course, sir. All, so, all, yeah. all okay. of our police uh, leaders. Madam BA, Madam BA, this question goes to you. You know, I'm sitting here. Council. I'm sitting here, and this is why I'm bringing this up because I brought it at my at the, at the public safety committee. And one of the things is, is I feel offended that this chief could answer the phone to my and my colleagues, and still he got me blocking the phone. So how am I going to have communication with this chief? How I could do it? A throw smoke in the air or whatever? So you know. I didn't want to bring it forward, but when I hear another council people saying that they got a nice, beautiful conversation on the phone with the chief and he cannot pick up my calls, there's a problem of communication uh, okay. in this area. So, 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 so I want to be treated the same way. All right? So, um, <laughs> got you. You got okay. me, right? Thank, thank, thank you. you. Uh, we thank all want to be treated. So, so we thank you. Thank you for your support. Okay. So, right. so, and you better not come after me okay. because I'm going to shoot you from here. Don't even do can, that. Can you please, Councilman? Uh, Don't even council do that. Members, council members. That's council, not right. Come on, Councilman. You're not going to. You're not going to. You're not going to. When a, when a chief is not performing, so I can say whatever I want. Council members. 
I'm You're going a councilman. To You're a councilman. Remember? When a chief is not performing, I could say Council whatever I want. Councilman Velas, Councilman, Councilwoman councilman. Cotton, please. Remember that. Ca councilwoman Cotton. So, so it, it, it is obvious to those that have been coming to these meetings and Three watching eight. and been part of public safety committee meetings that the councilman has, in various occasions, brought to the attention of the treatment. So what he has put forth and asked you certain questions was to put in public. So I understand what he's doing, but I think this, this was not the moment for it. But with that said, I want to thank you for today, all right? Um, respectfully, every council member here has the right to ask, and at the end of the day, Councilman Jackson said it best. We had no say on asking what the five areas of review or the RFP that has nothing to do with this council. We all, you've heard from everyone. I think at the end of the day, every council member here, I don't think that there's one council person that is not for public safety first in our city and that cares about our community. So I, and I, I, I believe that. Do we all have different ways and how do we channel things? Absolutely. So I just wanna thank you. Thank All you. right, and I look forward to seeing you know this come to fruition in terms of implementation, and I'm definitely going to be on top of every meeting that we have. I'm going to where are we with that staffing study, and so I'm expecting that you know just like every council member here that it is done and that it's given priority as other things are a priority as well. So I want to thank you very thank you. much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So. Um, So what I'd like to do right now, uh, Madam, Madam Clerk, I'd like the list, all right? But I'm going to take one item before the um, public portion, okay? Uh, item 31, Madam Clerk. Uh, item 31. Yes, yes, Madam President. And just so you all understand, today is a workshop, so we're just having discussions today about the items, but I know that there's a presentation. Uh, so Director, Economic Development Director, if you can please come forward. Madam Clerk, if you can please take the list after the gentleman signs. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, Good just evening. for the public, we are not doing public portion right now. We have a presentation with our economic development director. Once we're done with this item, we will do the public portion next. Yeah. Director, if you can please present to us item 31, give a quick synopsis. Absolutely, thank you, Council okay. President. And so before you right now is a very exciting project. Uh, 297 Getty Avenue okay. is going to be the transformation of that property into a smart, intelligent, uh, warehousing facility that will encompass just under 400,000 square feet. Um, the resolution that's before the council tonight uh, does three things. It designates uh, the development entity as the redeveloper for the area. Um, that's a requirement pursuant to the fact that it's in a redevelopment area. I would also like to note that the designated developer for the current site is actually St. Joseph's Hospital who also supports this effort. Um, the next item is to deem the proposed um, project, which is about 365,000 square feet uh, into warehouse, which comports with that uh, redevelopment plan. And then finally, it approves and authorizes the execution of the redevelopment agreement itself. So um, in your packets is a, a site plan for the facility. Uh, I also want to note that this has been approved by the county as well as by the city uh, planning board. And so what you have is a schematic um, of the facility as well as the site plan. And then I brought um, the development team as well as their council to answer any questions should the council want to talk about it. But I'm particularly excited about this site. It's a five block derelict former uh, Continental Cans site. And I'm very excited that we are going to be able to put this into productive use. I think Councilman Abdulaziz also I thank you in advance for listening to many of the different elements of the project. Um, but like I said, we're really excited about transforming this side of the city and to create up to 200 to 300 jobs um, depending on who the end user will be. Council President. Another job? Uh, Council oh, President. I know you Councilman you Abdulaziz. You let my colleagues speak right. first. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. Councilman Velas. They, re they uh, represent the six wards. So I, I, I represent the whole city here when I'm in this side, so I had to ask a question. On the last whereas, I believe, um, yes, on the last whereas, 
say the governing body decided to enter into the redevelopment agreement. Where is the redevelopment agreement? I don't have it attached here. It was in your packets um, digitally. I don't have it attached here. We're trying to save paper, sir. Uh, but we what? Your copy. We, we have a copy here if you'd like it. Yeah, but we have, we have electronic. We, was it sent to us electronically? Yeah. yeah. It was sent electronically? Yeah. Correct. It's on your laptop. It's here. It's on your Chromebook. So, emailed. You want me to open have, it? We could provide you a copy of it. It's, it's a bit lengthy. You, you could give them a hard copy. Okay. Director Powell. Uh, All right. They have one. So, can, can you give me, can you give me, uh, you see, I don't know why, but let me, let me, let me. Uh, So, look, do you want me to, I can summarize. Hold on, don't, don't be in the defensive, director. Hold on for a minute. Oh, I don't get defensive. All right, <laughs> because you want to you save, you want to save paper. Uh, so I want to be sure that I'm you. I'm trying to be as environmentally answer, sustainable as you possible. You answer so. my question. Okay, can we keep, a, can we have order, please? Yes, can if we you want to hear Councilman Velas, if you want to hear a quick synopsis, we can give it to you. Madam BA is expressing Can she's you give me give a quick synopsis of that? Uh, yeah, because they want to speak before me. So can you give me a quick synopsis of this? Sure. I mean, I also have their attorney. And here. what will be the benefit to the city? Absolutely. And taxpayer uh, saving or whatever it is? Uh, Councilman, you know? if you'll yeah. allow me. Um, no, yeah, I could allow you. The way that, thank you, I appreciate that. The way that it works with municipal land use law is that there are different redevelopment areas throughout the city. This particular area is referred to as Sector 11 Redevelopment Area. And so, pursuant to the fact that it, there is a redevelopment area and that the property falls within that, it's customary to create a redevelopment agreement which stipulates certain things about like performance and the like. But I, why don't we let the attorney tell you a little bit more of a synopsis yeah. in terms of what the legally binding element is. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Adam Fiella from Sills, Comes and Gross, we represent the um, Applicant proposed redeveloper Thor 297 Getty Avenue LLC. Um, so, is your question specifically, uh, Councilman, about the redevelopment agreement itself or the entire uh, resolution, if you want to meet it, or the project itself? Whatever you could tell me that could feel comfortable. <laughs> okay, great. So, uh, just to take a step back and uh, talk a little bit about the project very briefly, uh, right now the property has over 730,000 square feet of warehousing. The, and it's pretty dilapidated and there's trucks along the view of Thomas Street and Railroad Avenue. The proposed project uh, redevelops the site, demolishes the old buildings, and it's about 365,000 square feet, so almost or about half the size, which would cut down on potential traffic uh, generated based on square footage. It also um, increases the safety on the entrance, on the access driveway on Getty Avenue, which has been approved by the County Planning Board. It's a county road, Getty Avenue, and it moves it over slightly to allow trucks to not have to swing across the street to exit the site, and it prohibits uh, trucks from entering on that entranceway. They would entrance, uh, enter only on Thomas Street. The Thomas Street entrance also is uh, cleaned up significantly, so the view is uh, the drive aisle rather than trucks all over the place. Um, and it would be um, a Class A building. We have a rendering that was uh, submitted as well that uh, the design is to look at least along the Getty Avenue near the residence. It looks more like a traditional office building rather than a traditional warehouse. Um, we've been working on this project for quite some time. We met with St. Joe's uh, back in September and have been in contact with them. They wrote a letter of support that the council should have about the project. They are the master uh, redeveloper for the entire Area 11 redevelopment um, area. And uh, our client is uh, the contract purchaser of this site. And the redevelopment plan requires them to be designated as the redeveloper, requires a um, resolution from the city council stating that the project is consistent with the redevelopment plan and uh, requires entering into a redevelopment agreement. Council President. We also uh, obtained Patterson Planning Board approval um, so, uh, at, in, in this month as well. Um, and so. County we, as well? County yes. approval and uh, yeah. Patterson Planning Board yeah. approval. Yes. Council President? Uh, Councilman Abdelaziz. Thank you, Council President. Uh, to the Council. So this building, he's correct, it is a dilapidated building. It is located in my ward, and it is the entryway into South Patterson, into St. Joe's. Um, to, to answer some of the councilmen, I've met with some residents, and it is 
very, very important to state that this building is getting downsized. Uh, no apartments, no commercial space, meaning uh, no foot traffic coming in and out. This, this, the, to the residents in the Sixth Ward that called me, so, that are ecstatic about this, I remember the use, which was Continental Can. Uh, this is going to be a home run and a win-win for the city of Patterson and, and the Sixth Ward in South Patterson. Um, it's staying on the tax rolls. Uh, if you go there now, there is no lighting along Getty Ave. I made my concerns to the director. This also improves the traffic to my council colleagues. The, the loading docks will not face any residential properties anymore. Right? They, they, originally, they were going to put on Getty Ave. It'll be on the train track side. The trucks will enter from West Railway, which is all industrial, coming into the building and exiting, not touching Getty Avenue, uh, are making those right turns as it currently does now. Um, what I ask for, the, the, this is my first time speaking to you guys, or even introducing you guys, or, or, or having this conversation. Uh, some of the things that we look are what, what companies coming in? That was a lot of the questions I've received from the neighbors, right? What, what's coming? That's just the curiosity. Do you guys know? So I'll just start with a, um, with a hedge. I am an attorney, so I am uh, risk averse. It is being built on spec because the way the industrial uh, industry and warehouse industry has been moving is that tenants want to move in when it is either fully built or almost fully built that you cannot get a tenant. Uh, it's very rare to get a tenant before the um, building is built and when you're at the approval stage. With that being said, I'll turn it over to my clients to discuss some of the potential tenants. Um, and we estimate the amount of jobs for this to be 200, 250, maybe even 300. It really depends on the actual tenant, but it is going to be significant. And mm -hmm. when I say tenant, it is designed to be either one or two tenant, the building. Okay. So it could be either. But if you want to discuss just potential types of uh, Yeah, so. Like he was saying, we built this on spec, or we plan to build this on spec, which gives us the most oh, flexibility. For I can't hear you. Sorry about that. What's your name? Wade Washman. Well, okay. And I'm a senior associate with Thor Equities. Um, so as Adam was just saying, we built this, or we plan to build this on uh, spec, meaning that it would be pr built prior to knowing what the exact tenant would be and what the ex exact end use would be. Um, but the plan is to give it the most flexibility. So this current configuration that we have planned would work for distribution tenants similar to an Amazon, uh, so related to e-commerce or parcel distribution. Um, and it could also work up to you know, light manufacturing. So it's a, it's a wide variety and it's built intentionally to provide um, you know, the maximum flexibility. No, and th that's good to hear. City of Patterson, Sixth Ward, where, where this will be at, has a great workforce, right? People are looking for jobs. Um, as Ernie, as Ernie Rucker, as Ernie Rucker would tell you, we have many people that, that need employment. And I, I hope that, that this is going to be that type of uh, business that comes in, that's going to hire the residents. We have highly qualified, educated people that are willing to work. And that's most of the calls I received, walking distance from the site. And my expectation, as with any business, big, small, uh, restaurant, retail, is that you guys are going to be good neighbors to, to, the, to you, we want you to be part of the fabric of South Patterson, Absolutely. the Sixth Ward, and our city. You know, be part of the community, and, and, and be part of you know the schools that are right on that block. Um, as I stated, your property is a big piece. It's 17 acres. Uh, you don't really find 17 acres anywhere in in the city of Patterson. So I'm I'm excited. I, I welcome you guys. Um, I always say it's the best ward in the state of New Jersey. Don't Sorry, <laughs> um, and we, and, and, and I look forward to working with you guys um, and once you guys uh, come into the city of Paris, and to, just to my council colleagues, many residents, Bloomfield Ave, Getty Ave, Park Street, Elk Street, I've, spoke, I've been on the phone, are, are excited. And to, to, while we have police, fire here, to, I guess we got everything, this is a, a type of development that really doesn't, shouldn't be using many city mm -hmm. services. Yeah. Should it, you're not expecting any workers' kids go to our schools, right, that they're coming in? So, because 
this is something that's a smart development for that area. It's a warehouse now that's dilapidated. It's downsizing. And I'm excited to, for the jobs because you, you can't say they're not bringing jobs. Parking. because No, 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 because they're putting parking. 350 parking spaces. 350 park. You don't see any, like, they're, they're putting 350 parking spaces, which means who do you think is going to park there? The, the, the workers. So I'm excited. This is a win-win. I grew up going to school up the block. Believe it or not, the mosque on Gediev started in that warehouse. That has a lot of meaning to many people in South Patterson. Omar's mosque started and rented space. So that, that building's been used for everything. God knows what's going on in there now. So thank you, Council Collins. Thank you very much. Councilman Jackson and Councilwoman Cotton. It's hard to follow that. There's a lot of fluff that went on right there. Um, yeah, I know. Well, it was another 17 acres of land in the city. We gave it away for free on the other side of town, Fifth Avenue. 17 acres that we gave away where Walmart came in and presented a plan to put a super Walmart there, and this administration knocked that down. But uh, let's talk about some more facts. Director Powell, did you, um, did you send any of this information to me? All this information was sent to the entire council. Did, by yourself? Uh, Madam Clerk, I believe. Right, Madam Clerk? Madam all the attachments? Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking for it. I don't have it at all. I don't have it. But uh, so. Uh, I am going to put something on record because I did notice that there was something that went to Mike G. Jackson. He responded back to an email. I'm not saying it was this one, but we got to just verify and make sure that when we're adding Councilman Jackson that we're not doing Mike G. Jackson? Oh, here's his M. Here's his here's M. Jackson. Uh, mine is Mike Jackson. No, I, I understand, but you see, sometimes it could be confused no. depending no. on which no. assistant is, is sending an Council email. Council President, no. you're, you're, you're correct. It, it happened, and then we tried to correct it lately. I know it went to the other Mike Jackson, That's and we PW guy, corrected it. And asked Maybe we just should have Mike G. Jackson just change his name. No, <laughs> <I was> just <laughs> kidding. I was just kidding. Go see. ahead, Councilman Jackson. Okay. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, this is just to the public, right? Um, first of all, is this time sensitive, Director? Are we required trying to get this done within a certain period of time? Yeah, I think uh, the, it's time sensitive in terms of the contract, in terms of the contract of sale, and just in general in terms of being able to put it into productive use. So Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised. Everything that comes before the council, we got to get it done by tomorrow. Otherwise, we can't get it done. You know, all these jobs, I mean, we, I, we, we were promised 300 plus jobs. Is there a, a guarantee in this contract on the Patterson jobs? Or, or is, are, are these 350 parking spaces that Councilman Abdelaziz is, is boasting about is just to house the out of town parkers who's coming and driving into the city to take some of these jobs away? It's designed for the facility itself. For the facility, okay. Do we have a potential tenant already lined up? Like is Amazon lined up? So we don't even know what it's gonna be for. We just gotta rush to just get it done and run through this. So I'm glad you're here, Brother G, because these are the, some of the things that you're photographing, right? See, the redevelopment plan outlines what you can and cannot do. So when you see a, 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 a two-family neighborhood being knocked down and then you see a 36-unit building going up there, it outlines it in the redevelopment plan. When you see a house that's on a 25 by 100 that doesn't require any uh, zoning review, it's outlined in the redevelopment plan. When you're trying to rush a contract through that's going to bind a community into being, I mean, you got to look at the specifics because we just spent $100 million, well, $92 million, let me not mess that up, on the stadium that created a grand slam of three jobs for local Patterson people. I mean, I, it's relative tonight, because I see we got a lot of gas money and parkway money that's being spent to get here tonight. But, but with that being said, why are we rushing through contracts like this all the time and it's thrown in the council's face? And we, don't need, we should have a, a thorough opportunity, just the developers, the potential developers coming in. And uh, he's the attorney. He's the attorney, right? Well, yeah, but council. I thought, I thought he's the developer. There's, 
I would argue that there hasn't been a rush that we've been following the proper process with regards to a private land sale. And that to the extent that we can engage our council colleague each step of the way, I think there's no doubt that taking a derelict five block place and site in the city and turn it into a productive use is not a positive economic development thing. I will always rush to get good things done. That's what the job is. If I wasn't hustling to get Hinchlift done and the Visitor Center and Argus and Lucas Dello Park and Ward Street and Leader Die Sold and the Armory, I mean, I could keep going, but I think this is another How many people from Patterson are making money or, make, or benefiting from any of that stuff you talked about? Many. Many, and I'm happy First to of all, the to Argus project, all the, the, the Argus to project, that. the two Patterson people, I brought them to the table. They they came directly to the, here. You didn't bring that to the table. You didn't you didn't source that. I don't know what you're referring okay? to. Okay, I'm sure you don't. But mm -hmm. Hinchcliffe Stadium is another again 100 million dollars that the investor came out of his pocket with very little money, and they're going to control it. Where we only get access for 180 days, so our kids are being short shorted. You can say whatever you want. You drive out the city every single day. You're not impacted. Drive back too. You're not impacted the way it. Yeah, of course, you drive back for a check. No, I you don't. You drive back for a check every single day, and you drive back just like when just like when the BA was in was in a was in a, a cabinet meeting and made a claim that if she didn't take get a fifty thousand dollar increase, this is ridiculous. So, like, it's not ridiculous. Please, so, please, so, please Council are, President, are please maintain the decorum. See, okay. please Stop. maintain decorum. Okay, so Council so, President, so if I have the floor, Ma Madam is BA, my Ma question Madam B Council Jackson, different from anything one else? One second, you said to keep decorum, right? <laughs> So let's calm down for a minute, okay? Councilman Jackson has the floor. Councilman Jackson, can you wrap up so we can move on to the next council person? Sure, I'm trying my best. I continue to be interrupted. I mean, I'm just really addressing the, the residents of the city, which is, I'm wondering how much of this room makes up residents, but I'm talking to people at home as well. I mean, when we're signing off on agreements, we have to make sure that these agreements are, I'm not saying this is a bad deal. It could potentially be the one good deal. Finally, we get a deal that Patterson residents can actually benefit from. But what I'm talking about is, is we have to, have, you sh we should have more time to vet these things and add these, add, when you have a contract, you have to add the things in the contract. You can't have advocates coming to the podium every other night saying, when are we gonna hire? And then people asking for scheduling meetings with the mayor and begging the mayor to make sure that the VA, make sure the director of economic development talks to the developer and the developer says, man, get out of here. I'm, I'm gonna do what I wanna do because that's actually what happened with Pipe Construction said, you know what? I don't care what you guys say. We're not hiring, we're, these, these are our employees. This is who we're hiring. So again, I'm talking to the residents and the council members. You being very irresponsible when you vote in favor of anything that does not have, that does not represent the best interests of all the residents, not just one ward, not just one area, not just one developer who could support multiple campaigns or things of that nature. We talk about the residents and the job creation. Let's talk about, let's dive into that. How many, fair market rate jobs, livable wage jobs are we creating? How many? That's, it should be built into the contract. Don't come here and sell us with 350 jobs and it's not in writing. Council, Councilwoman no, Mim said it once before, if it's not in writing, that means it does not exist. Right. And if it's not here built into the contract, then we just have three right. guys in three nice suits right. coming in here right. to steal more money. Right. And that's basically what it is. We, let's call it what it is. I mean, Patterson, it's no secret why everybody's driving from all over the place. People coming in from Manhattan, all over. You see Manhattan plates in Patterson all the time because people know there's money to be made here. We have to be responsible. I rest it there. I mean, it goes on death ears anyway. Go ahead, Council President. Okay, uh, Councilwoman Cotton, and then Councilman Abdulaziz. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask the question. Um, I remember when I first got here, I always said that we needed someone on staff uh, to go out like states, like New York State, like Connecticut State, look for people, businesses to come into our city. And you know, those states give back um, senators. You know, if you, if you hire 300 people, you don't have to pay this. You know, I mean, and I go to states and I see what, what how other states 
you can go out, you can go out west, uh, Montana, Iowa, you know, they're grabbing people. And I said, when I first got here, we need someone to go out and look for people, look for companies that, that want to come here to, to that want to come here. But then when I heard him say that they're not coming no more if they got to fix it up. They got to be fixed already before they come. They, they don't want to come here and fix up a building and, and, and do all what they have to do. They want to see it done. Because whatever company you guys are trying to get, I can tell you New York is trying, Connecticut is trying, Pennsylvania is trying. They all out there pulling, pulling to get, you know, if, if you can hire 300 people, I'll, you don't have to pay something. You, I'll give you an incentive. Um, if it, it, not only, I don't think that it would only be residents of the Sixth Ward working. I believe that it would be everybody throughout the whole city. It's not going to be one person, you know. I mean, I, I know what Councilman Jackson is saying. They wanted to see it, but I often said that when I first got here, we got to hire somebody who's going to go out and look at these when they have these business conventions and these companies. Um, you go down to Leagues and City, you see all those manufacturers in there uh, trying to uh, bring their product here into our city. So with that being said, the original owner, Continental Can, is this building in like foreclosure or something? I'm not sure. It's for sale. It's the same people? I mean, the same owner. The owner's yeah. selling it. These are the potential uh, buyers. Oh, and these are the potential buyers. So Correct. now, but you gonna and you going out now trying to say, you know what? We're fixing this. When I see the the diagram in here, it's very pretty. The outside of the building, I mean, it, it's a very nice design. Just let me finish. Like uh, it's not crazy. I'm just saying. I know what other states are doing, and they're grabbing people, and they're bringing people, and they're giving them incentive, and they're saying if you hire 400 people, they're saying if you hire 500 people, this is what we're gonna give you. You'll go right down and look for something for a company to come in here. You know what? Let me tell everyone, just go up and down Broadway. Up and down Broadway is all in foreclosure. We wanna do something? We got a bunch of buildings that we can look at now to try to go in and get something if we wanna do something. When you gotta go out and look for businesses to come here to hire people at a decent wage, we know it's already $15. Hopefully they'll start at $20. Hopefully they'll start at $22. But you now wanna fix this building, hope that you can get a tenant, which you believe that you will because these buildings, these people are wanting buildings that's already fixed. And it's gonna have the opportunity. You know, we could put it here uh, 300 jobs, 90% got to be Patersonians. I mean, that could be put in here. They got to be Patersonians, so it could be put there, but I know how difficult it is. I've been here, and you're trying to get people to come here, and they, they're not coming, so you got to give them something for them to get here. And I just need to share that because, you know, these states, and you can see the commercial on TV, uh, the Apple state, you see it, how they're dragging people to get to their place because they're offering different incentives for them to be there. So, I mean, if we got a person, and you know, you're not sure yet if you're gonna get a tenant, you hope that you are gonna get a tenant, correctly? You don't know yet. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna drop 15, 20 million dollars, hope that you're gonna get a tenant. Well, whatever, 30 million, whatever. I mean, you're dropping this kind of money hoping that you're going to get a tenant. I just need to share that because, you know, I know what it is, you know, to look okay. for jobs to come into our city. We actually need somebody working full time going all over this country trying to get companies to come in here. And that's what we really do need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilwoman McCann. Councilman Abdulaziz and Councilman Thank, thank you, Council President. Not to beat, Council, a, to beat a dead horse with this because I, I have to respond back it, to the public and the people watching. Let me tell you what's currently there. Nothing. There's a current warehouse that's double the size of what's proposed. They are hiring any resident, any person. We don't know what they're hiring. Let's not mistake this as public land. This is a private real estate matter that the city has no interest in whatsoever. The redevelop agreement here is in front of us, and I want that clients. How much are you investing to purchase this property, approximately? 
uh, 71 or 70 million on just the purchase, but there will be an additional Look 80 million plus. A, so private over money. Private money. Pri private money, correct? Uh, over yes. 150 million dollars is going in to this property. This is not, I don't want you to mistake this with tax credits, hinge lift. That's just being said, and that's the problem with this city, right? We look at things that are good for the area. And, and let me tell you, Councilwoman, and you're right, they have to find a tenant. If anyone knows the trend with business, it's e-commerce, right? You order your stuff from Amazon. They're cutting the retail person out now. It goes straight from the warehouse to your doorstep. Everyone's looking for warehouse space, all right? All the furniture, whatever it is, they're looking for warehouse space. And we have something in front of us because this is not a rush. I have, I've received this over the weekend. I've, I followed this on the planning board and I watched it to make sure that the best property, and this is a private development, right? They reconfigured the traffic plan. They downsized the building. It's gonna, you're, and, and Councilman Jackson, Absolutely, people want to come into the Sixth Ward and invest. Because I'm, I'm hoping that this starts a trickle down for the whole city. When people say, you know what, we're close to Route 80, let's bring in some more e-commerce stuff. And that's why I don't want anyone to be mistaken. This is not public land. Right now, they can hire anybody that they want. We don't know, they, they subdivide it. And, and, um, and it's gonna stay on the tax rolls. It's gonna stay on the tax rolls. No, no. No impact to our schools, right? School nine, which is bursting at the seams, it, is, it has no impact because of this. Our police and fire hopefully do not have to go there as much as it is with, with residential or commercial properties. So I don't want anyone to mistake in this with any other project. This is a private person selling it to another private person and we're making sure, and, and the residents are happy, it's maintaining its use that they per when they bought their house, they bought a house across the street from a factory. And they're happy, it's gonna stay as a factory. And that's what they're excited about. And I don't want anyone to be mistaken with that. And I'm sure the developer needs this agreement because they're, they're putting in 100, just to purchase a property, you heard them, 70 plus million, they need their protections. I'm not, anyone here is putting $70 million on a, on a uh, if you're buying a house or something, you wanna make sure you have protections that you're able to do what you have to do that you envision. So let's not mistake in this. I don't want this to get caught up in politics or the, this ward, that ward. Hopefully my goal is this trickles down to the entire city when other e-commerce people see, hey, that's close to Route 80. That's close to Route 20. That's close to 46. And I'm fortunate that it's in it's these 17 acres that we're not gonna have 5,000 units in a mall there. Thank you, Council President. So, Councilman Abdelaziz, I would say to you all, if you guys want to hire Councilman Abdelaziz <laughs> to be your advocate. <laughs> Council okay. President. He's already on their payroll. No, 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 stop. Excuse no, 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 no. me. He's already on their payroll. That was wrong. Excuse me. The Council that was President, wrong. Council President, no, we're it, over it, here it, insinuating, and let the record reflect, Council. Pay Council, pay Council President, I need the floor. Can, no, wait, one that, second. I'm going to give it to you, but Councilman Jackson, that was wrong, because I was saying it because I'm in full support of Councilman Abdelaziz and this project Let, and just for every wait, 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 I'm gonna no, give no, you the no. floor in a minute just so everyone knows here and that's okay you can come here attack say and all but the truth is the truth there, this is not being rushed. This is a process, a process that goes through committees to different departments. It gets voted on county level, the, the planning board. It goes through a committee, and then it comes to us. We get this stuff in writing. We get it in a packet. We get it through emails. So today is a workshop, exactly so everyone that's not part of the committee, because every council member cannot be part of a committee, because then that's being, I believe the, the, give me the law, the five, we can't, right, we can't, you can't have more than four council members in a committee, if not you have to open it up to the public. So this is where the workshop, we bring these items and then every council member has the right to ask questions, you know, but the, the, the reality is when I made this statement, and I apologize Councilman Abdelaziz, because I was just saying, because he's a champion for his ward, He's a councilman of the sixth ward, but when he votes, he votes for the entire city. In terms of this now, it is in his ward, and every council member here has the right, when there's things that it's in their ward, I give them 
the right to first speak, okay? And if they don't feel comfortable with something and it's something that's being brought to their ward and they want it removed because they need more information, I give them that. So with that said, I'm gonna give back the floor to Councilman um, Abdelaziz, then it'll be Councilman Thank, thank you, Council President. Dallas. So as President. stated, some of these as comments you. that my colleagues, I'm not even gonna entertain. One thing I'm gonna let everyone know, I do fight for my ward, and when I see something good, I'm not gonna allow anyone to try to sabotage something that's good for the residents in that area. That's who I represent. Those are the people that I come here at this meeting to make sure that they understand that I'm gonna fight for them. So when I see a, a project that's good, so I get ridiculed on both ends, right? Because I do my due diligence unlike other people on the council, right? I, when, when I see a business, when I see a business, when I see a business, when I see a business that's not good for the neighborhood, they say, why is the councilman questioning them? When I see a, 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 when I see a, a, a business that's good for the neighborhood, I'm gonna go up to bat for them. And that's what I do for the sixth ward, and that's why we try to make sure we get smart development that's gonna be good for the area. And this right here is definitely good for the area. Thank you, Council President. Okay. Council, Council Mims? Councilman Abdelaziz, you know I like you, but that, that wasn't nice. So I have a couple of questions. So number one, is there a pilot or any tax abatements attached to this project? They have not applied for any pilots on this project. Yet. Not yet. I, I can't answer that as of now. They're saying they have not yet. They have not yet. Okay. So number two, I just want Patterson, listen. They have not yet. Number two, this um, item came to us on Friday. There were approximately eight pages. The redevelopment agreement was not attached. We just got this tonight. The redevelopment agreement has approximately a lot of pages, I'm gonna just put it that way. It's, it's thick, I just want Patterson to see. So this is what we got tonight. Doesn't give us time to um, review it. Am I correct to say, because I followed TAP into Patterson, this item was just approved the other day from Planning Board? Yes. I believe last week, last Monday. I believe the date was March 7th uh, for the Patterson Planning Board meeting. Okay. So I'm just asking because the first step should have been Economic Development Committee, and I was just told that it did not go through that committee. So I just want to know what committee did this project go before, if it, if it did not go to Economic Development Committee first? Because it should go to Economic Development, then to Finance. So why did it not go to Economic Development? I can actually answer that one, but I'm going to let you do it. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, Councilwoman, we haven't had an economic development committee meeting in, in quite some time. Um, and so this item, I think, have is really- Have you requested it? Yeah, I have okay. requested it. We've, um, Councilman Mendez and I have talked several times about having a meeting, but it's never kind of come to fruition. And so um, I was able to bring it to the finance committee as a way to get the project moving. So you're saying count, you requested it through the chair of economic development to have a meeting. You sent it to all the members of the committee or it was just sent directly to him? Well, I, it's, it's at the, I, I try to go to the chairman first to make sure that he can be the lead in terms of So how many opportunities the, did you go to the chairman? Several. Okay, how was that done? Um, texts, phone calls, emails. So just a point of recommendation. If you went to the chair of one of the most critical committees in the city council and you didn't get a response, I'm not sure why you didn't copy the entire committee there's four members or copy the council president to let her know that you're trying to get a meeting and i understand that it it didn't happen so you went to finance no, 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 it did. well and i would also I'll add that you. on the finance committee are several members of the economic development so, committee so councilwoman so, just so, to address what you just said so it did come to me and i said no make sure that you put it in writing and then at that point the councilman is the chair is also the vice chair of finance so with the chair of finance and so you have councilman Kalik who's also part of economic development am i correct all right so because there was a majority that's why it was bought to finance because you are correct it goes to economic development and then it goes to finance and the fact that you know they were approved through the county and through the um 
Patterson Planning Board, then it was requested, can I bring it to finance? So this drives the chair of finance said yes. So this drives a point even deeper. So you said you called, you text, you sent an email. Now the council president is stating that you sent it to her as well, right? And then the recommendation was to send it to another committee, which the same chair of that committee is a part of another committee. Was he present in the finance committee? Uh, Mendez is not the chair of the finance committee, I believe. It's I, I didn't say he was a chair. You missed he, my point. I, I said he's a member of the committee. Yes. yes. Was he, so he was present there? Correct. He's in the meetings. Chair. What date were the meetings? It's I believe it was council minutes every council meeting. Tuesday. So on Tuesdays, it's 5:30 on workshop and six o'clock in regular. So it was the last meeting. It so, was so, so it was okay. Right. So this was approved last Monday. Monday planning board. Pass and planning board on the seventh. Yes. Which Correct. was a Tuesday. No, seventh was no, a Monday. Monday. Tuesday Monday. was council meeting on the on the. Tuesday. On the Monday, I'm I'm look. I want y'all to, because you know, I should have made y'all take an oath tonight. But, so this got approved, you're saying, on a Monday night in the planning board. What day did, did it get approved for the county planning board? Was that before the city's planning board? Yes, it was before. It was at the end of February. I think it was the 24th, but I would have to check my uh, calendar. But okay, it was so, before the Patterson So they board. were first. Then our planning board, which is a, approves everything, they were next, correct? I don't want to say they approve everything, but yes, no, I'm they not were asking next. you to. That's a known fact. I, I don't want you to say that. It's a known fact. We go to they the tape. They were correct. But they were next. So from that time, what was the first date that you reached out to the chair of economic development to have a meeting? Because you said you did three steps before it went to finance. So from last Monday, Tuesday, was that all last week? Oh. Oh. Well, you can't answer that because no, Mike Powell just, just I said. I just want to step back for a second because the um, this was the redevelopment process was going on simultaneously and the redevelopment agreement was being negotiated for months with the city's redevelopment council. So it wasn't one step uh, for planning board and then start to go through the redevelopment process. It had been in place for months beforehand. I, I just, I'll turn it over to Director Powell to discuss the exact- And, I, and I'll, I'll question that, but, but yes, Dr. Director Powell. I, to get you the specifics on how many text messages I sent or phone calls, I mean, I can do that, but um, I don't really know what benefit it will provide. I reached okay. out, I tried to have a meeting, I went to the committee that is the closest to economic development, as you know, as my former chairwoman. That, that's and why I'm so, asking. You know, and so I reached out to council president because this is a good project. It's an important project for the city. So let me, so Patterson, I want you to hear this. I'm not saying I'm not for the project. That's not the point. The point is when you're doing business of this magnitude, there should be a very clear, concise, detailed meeting in all committees. Economic development, because there's some level of experience and skill sets that are required for that piece, then to finance because of the financial aspects that should be discussed in that part. If the finance meeting, which has other items, this is not the only item that's discussed in finance, I don't know what that discussion details. If you have this thick of a packet that none of the council members receive, here's some points. Is there an employment agreement that identified that we must hire Patterson residents in this agreement? Is that here? There is not. And that's probably because there was no economic development meeting. Yeah. Is there a private labor agreement, which is known as a PLA, because we have laborers that have to work in Jersey City and in Newark and in Camden and in Passaic because they can't get jobs here because when it comes time to us making these agreements based on master plans that were approved through the city, those things should be in place. Is that in this agreement? Well, it's, it's complicated because as, uh, no. as is it yes or no? There's no complicated. Well, no, because we it's have a private written document. It's private Director land. Powell, we have a written document. Is that in, there's no, it's not a relationship, it's complicated. Either you're in it or you're not. Well, is it in the document? It's not in the document. And okay. I, I just want to note so, that it's also because it's private land. Uh, but at the end of the day, private land is in Patterson. We have to stop saying it's private land. Someone wants to give us a whole bunch of money. That's great. When someone is coming into Patterson, we, our first priority should be Patterson. And the problem sometimes, the reason why that's not the priority, because you don't live here. Mm. You don't live here. So 
People that live here, I'm born and raised Patterson. When I'm thinking of stuff like this, and this may be wonderful, so I'm not saying it's not, but these are things that should be in the plan. Employment agreements, private labor agreements. We meet and the unions give out donations to people and we, they get all these con contributions and we do not put their information in agreements. <laughs> So you have Patterson people that are carpenters, electricians, and all types of things, but they don't get the jobs. They don't get the jobs, and that's why it's so important. And it's not all your fault, because this should have been through economic development in addition to finance, because those are some questions that should be posed in that committee, and that's why it's so critical that those meetings are held. And you just got this approved last week, and that was before the council already, and we just got this document tonight. So sometimes I'm saying, you gotta learn the art of counting the five. I keep saying that, you gotta learn to count the five. And it's not against the sixth ward, it's not against the councilman, it's just about process. Allow us, I'm gonna beg and ask once again, Madam BA, keep us in the loop of these processes. I know they have, the meetings are had, we're not a, if we're not on these committees, we're not privy to some of this detail. So we come in tonight, we get our packet on Friday. As you know, I am someone that reads my document. But when we come in and th these items are given tonight out based on a, a request or a ask, then we have to sit here and come to the public because the public is expecting us to fight on their behalf. So these are some things that to me should be included in the document. We can't go by any longer, oh, they told us they were going to do it. We have projects that you told us, we sat here, we said, okay, we're going to give you an opportunity, and we voted yes. And we go, and the, Patterson didn't get the jobs. They didn't get the jobs. So I am asking, once again, I'm not sure what, if this is going next week and we're going to vote, but those items should be in these agreements. We got to make sure that Patterson gets these jobs. That sounds great. I'm happy, Councilman Abdelaziz. Two to three hundred jobs, that's, that's, a hot, that's a record number for Patterson. That would be great, but what happens if they don't go to Patterson? On page number eight, there's a, I'm over 50, so let me put my glasses on. Yeah, yeah. There is a warehouse application a letter, let me make sure it's the right page, a application to the members of the council and the planning board that was written on February 22nd by St. Joseph Hospital, which is great. That should be a part of the discussion for the need that St. Joseph wrote the hospital. Is it because of the, the private land? Is it because of the, that it's near St. Joseph Hospital? I don't know, but that's in this document. I, so, I tried to explain that earlier. The reason is, is because they're the designated developer for the, the Area 11 redevelopment plan. So out of respect, the development division. team went hospital and met division. with because they want to develop their own site after the purchase. And so in order for them to develop technically, they would need to be designated, thus it's in the resolution. So it's, it's kind of like a procedural thing. Okay, well just explain it, yeah. right? You have my number, you've called me for everything else, just call me, bring it to a point of clarity so that we can make sure that we're on the same page. But we gotta fight for Patterson people to have these jobs, not just saying it, it needs to be in the document. The document is coming before us and we have to vote on it, it should be in here. And I'll say it again, if it's not in the document, it's not gonna happen because we get amnesia after we vote. So I don't want that to happen. We need to make sure that it's in the um, uh, document. Thank you, Council President. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilman Velez. Yes, thank you. Uh, Council uh, President, uh, I just tried to be quick because I pick up some stuff that um, Councilman, Councilwoman uh, Min say. So, so let's, let's, let's keep in mind that this went into the planning board, correct? Yes. They don't need to count five. The whole board is from the mayor, right? So in other words, what I'm going to say is, the letter was made uh, February 22nd. Uh, Director Powell, can you tell me when, or, or the gentleman in the back uh, put the application into the go to the board, on front of the board? the date that they applied to go in front of the board. The original date. It was, I, I have to check my notes, but it was somewhere around the, I know this is a little bit broad, but it was somewhere around November to January. To anyone? 2021? Uh, November 
2021 to around January 2022. I'd have to check when so we submitted. Less, a, less than five months, right? From when we submitted an application to be heard by the planning board? Yeah. Yes. I, and I don't, and I think it's, uh, do you, know, you that, that would be. Do you request a, a special meeting to go in front of the board or you just put the application and went straight to your schedule? We, um, we put the application in, spoke to the planning department, asked if uh, the board was available for a special meeting. They said yes, we paid the fee for it, and then we had a special meeting. Correct, it was rushed into a special meeting, correct? I wouldn't say rushed, but it was at a special meeting. No, there's a lot of people waiting for appointment on the planning board, and they still don't get rushed. So, it was in November, um, and then it was approved in March 7 at the planning board, correct? Yes. yes. That was last Monday. Did your organization, your company, or who you represent, had prior conversation with Mr. Power or the administration regarding this project before even going in front of the board? Yes. Yes. And we had before. Been, before. We had been negotiating the redevelopment uh, agreement with the city's redevelopment council since, I believe, December. Uh, we had preliminary meetings with uh, Mr. Powell and uh, his staff before that. Um, we met with St. Joe's Hospital in September 2021. Um, so yes, this project has been pending um, and for some time. Correct. Do you communicate through email, text, uh, regarding your uh, development agreement before even the project was approved by the board? Uh, Yes, and that's pretty common. In fact, uh, the redevelopment plan does not specify it has to be one or the other. Um, it, it happens simultaneously in my experience. I can only speak about my experience. I do these sometimes simultaneously, sometimes redevelopment agreement first and then planning board, sometimes planning board and then the redevelopment agreement. So you go in front of uh, the mayor and the uh, director here, hey, I'm gonna do this before I go and approve this, how you go help me? No, that is not how the conversation went. I, I'm not really sure what that is. I like the project. I was watching the meeting myself, okay? And I recall in that meeting, and you could look at the tape, I sat there and I look. At, I, I was like, I want to do something you too, right? And here comes up, the meeting. And the meeting, somebody stated this. This is going to create 270 and 300 jobs. The, in the meeting, they stated, and I don't know if it was you on the other job, they said, and they asked this question, do you have a tenant for that place? They say no, right? But the next day, the next day, an article came out that Amazon want to be established in there. So you didn't have a tenant, that was said quick. Amazon-like. Like, so hey, yeah, listen, conversation could happen between, uh, you know, and say, hey, listen, Amazon, we're gonna do this for you, okay? So the reason I asked, and ladies and gentlemen, the reason I asked for a redevelopment agreement in the beginning, you heard all the questions that came forward, is to protect that if you say, do you have, you could have employment for, for residents of Patterson? Do you got to create employment that for the residents of Patterson? That is absolutely the goal. Yeah? What was that? That is absolutely the goal. That's the goal. So back there, there's a bunch of individuals that don't have jobs. Can they apply today? Well, we have to get it built first. Actually, we have to get it passed. No, no, no. Council, from then build scratch. It. I say from scratch. From scratch means, can, can, Mr. Adelzi, you the attorney for the, for the individual? What? So hold on. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. Council members. Sir, I didn't interrupt you. Let me, give, let me give this clear. You know, the councilman could lobby for things that come for his ward, but council president in the beginning says, I know that um, Mr. Allen C is, is anxious and passionate with his project, so he don't work for that company, so I know he's anxious. Because we all anxious to see that, that corner that everybody see through Route 80 right. get redeveloped. Everybody agreed. At the same time, we want to see the entrance of Patterson clean, and redevelop and beautiful, you know. I would like to see that they, in the redevelopment agreement, they say we could adopt the highway or whatever entrance to put it beautify for our building could look better, right? So, because this is not here, a lot of agreement is not here, and we don't want to sign a blank check to no one. We already have an experience with Hinkley Stadium, already had an experience, and not a good one. I, I would, I would, not, take, not a good one. I would take issue with that. 
I, I really would. I would take issue on that statement. To say well, that to say that that's not going to benefit the community is just. No, just, I never say that it's, it's not going to benefit. I never say it's not going to benefit. I want to make sure that whatever you say is here. I want to make sure that if we're not here, Council okay, President. it's written here for we could move forward and say it's written here. We need jobs. Seventy percent of individuals that works here, even from zero, from construction, subcontractor, everybody. All right, because Patterson deserves better. You know, people out there, and I hope, Mike Powell, that you don't see Patterson at the same way people see us as a gold mine and then leave and leave us stranded with a lot of problems. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Councilman Velez. And I know the last speaker for this item is going to be uh, Councilman Kalik, but um, I am committee. going to please. Uh, uh, can the, the public has been waiting, the public portion, just so you all know they're sitting out there. We have only discussed one item on the agenda. There was a discussion on something else on the police audit, but only one item, which is item 31. So I just, let us be mindful. We, we have 60 items to discuss. And we've only discussed one, and it's 9.15. So I'd like to open up the public portion after your statement. And to all the council, that item is going to go on regular. Because it's obvious that this is not a consent item. This item will go on regular for a vote up or down in support of or not for next week. Uh, th thank you, Council President. Council McLeek. I see a lot of new faces in the uh, audience. And I personally, I apologize to everybody. The political tide has turned in the city of Patterson. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this item, we are getting off the subject of the item. This is one of the best projects that I've seen since I've been here for six, six years. Creating 250 to 400 uh, jobs, permanent jobs. Show me one project that came into Patterson in last. Private. Mr. Rocker, you are very involved. Private money. Last pri with the, this is a private money, too. It's not a no tax credit. I see some of my colleagues turn their back around, uh, uh, approve. Developer with 40 million, 50 million take tax credit given to them. That's city taxpayer money, tax credit, which didn't even create one job. Now, this is the one of the best projects I see is an issue. I'm, I'm out of words, honestly. Come on, let's focus on, on, on the jobs at hand and move this city forward. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Council much. President. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Director and, and Council gentlemen. Council I'm President. sorry that I, I don't recall your names. Uh, my apologies. Uh, but thank you. Thank you. This Council. item is going to, like Ca I said, Council go on President. to regular. Madam Clerk, item item 31 is going to go on regular. Yes. It's a question okay. to you. I to have you. it. Okay, Councilman Villas. Yes, Council President. I got a question for you, and and you probably could could tell us. If this company, for example, is a private land, is a private company, if we vote it up and down, they still go to construct, they still was approved by the board, they could spend the money there, they don't need no, us. No, they, 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 they need various pieces to be able to have a and, and to project. And to Mr. Um, Councilman Second Ward. Yes, sir. I, I could name you a hundred jobs that have been, a uh, hundred projects that have been done in the redevelopment zone, first ward, Fourth Ward and Fifth Ward that are private, hire people from Patterson, contract subcontractor from Patterson, hire employee from Patterson, a bunch of them, more than this administration have done. Those are not permanent jobs. And they are, Those are permanent jobs job and private okay. jobs. Seasonal jobs. And they don't come to the council, I, only to the board. I, I stand You're to right. my right. statement. Let, let us, okay. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, how many speakers do we have? Nine speakers. Okay. Nine. Very good. Uh, Madam, the, the public portion is now open, so Madam Clerk, can you please call the first speaker? Yeah, the first speaker, Mr. Teague, Corey Teague. Okay, good evening. Corey good evening. Teague, 65 Prince Street, Patterson, New Jersey. Um, as you all well know, this has been a weekly uh, movement in terms of getting answers for the disappearance of Felix de Jesus. Uh, the reason why I'm here tonight on that topic is about the body cam footage. Now, the body cam footage, when you really look at the, the, the totality of it, it's not only for the residents, but it's also to clear the police as well. 
So if the police officers didn't feel they did anything wrong, why is it hard for them to release that footage? Wouldn't you want to clear your name and clear what happened? Or do you want this cloud of suspicion and this gray area to continue? Because when you don't get answers, you start to create situations within your own mind. What can you do if you're not being given any answers? What can you do when you're trying to find out what happened? This is not complicated. We know that on that particular date, after that interaction with Patterson Police, he was never seen again. And when I say he, I'm talking about Felix. That's an issue. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. If that's what we're really trying to do as a city, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be the way it is right now where it seems like we're having to pull teeth. We're on, this is day 42, if I'm not mistaken. And they still don't know where he is. They have no, not even an inclination. They don't have his ID, his phone, none of his things that were with him. No, it's just, how does a person completely vanish into thin air after having an interaction with Patterson police? I mean, you have to know that we're not gonna go away. The family's not gonna go away. And they have some things they wanna say tonight. And I hope that you guys listen and get out of your feelings. This isn't personal. They are trying to find their loved one, and I'm here to represent them and make sure that happens. We're not, we don't care about your personal issues. You're running, you're not running. That is not our concern. The only thing we want is to get answers and to find out who the officers were that were involved that night. Why is that such an issue? You want to protect them, but you didn't protect him. Imagine that. You swore, you took an oath, you raised your hand that you were going to protect and serve. Where, where did it take place in this incident? And how dare you say we dropped him off in an area because he requested it? If somebody is intoxicated, if they're inebriated, as a police officer, you have an obligation to take them to a place where they can get help. You do not leave them in the street. You do not make that determination within yourself to say, I'm just going to take them somewhere and put them. Your responsibility is to take them to the hospital. They just found a young, young man tonight, I think it was a little, little child. They found him, no shirt, no shoes, they took him to St. Joe's. That's normal protocol. You don't just drop somebody off somewhere and say, oh, well, we left him where he was asking us to put him. That's what they told the media, that's what they told Channel 11. He requested to be you know, in a certain area, and then they said, oh, you know, he was, um, he was harassing people. He was drunk and he was harassing people. Let's just, for sake of argument, if that's what was going on, does that call for some sort of vigilante type of justice? Or your own type of street justice where we got to make this person disappear because we think he was harassing somebody? Is that what we're doing right now? That's not the law. What do we have going on out here, man? What is it that's going on? Do we have a band of people on the police force that are hell-bent on doing their own form of street justice that they're just going to start making people disappear that they don't like or they're not familiar with or they don't care about? We have to call attention to this. And until you do, I'm going to be here blowing the bullhorn. That's it. Thank you very much, Mr. Teague. Mr. Teague, st stay right there for a minute. Corporation Council, I, I, I need for the family once again clarity. Every meeting they come here and they ask, why can't the video footage be released? Can you please, what is the reason that the department who has the video coverage? Thank you, Council President, for your question. And uh, just to reiterate, uh, there is a pending internal affairs investigation. And as a result, that uh, information cannot be released at this time. It's what about not, the Supreme Court decision saying, that was made yesterday? It's not saying, well, please, Mr. Teague, don't Mr. Teague, interrupt Teague, me. Let me let him finish. Please. Okay. Thank you. Um, and so, you know, I'm not saying that it can't be released, period, but as soon as that investigation is done, I expect it to be available. And um, I have spoken with the people in internal affairs, as a matter of fact, even earlier today. And my understanding is that's proceeding quickly and expeditiously. Okay, so uh, just another question for the family. Internal affairs is ran by the prosecutor's office, correct? At this time, that's correct. Okay. Mr. T, has the family gone to the prosecutor's office? Yeah. And the okay. Supreme Court okay. on yesterday right, no, no, no. ruled. Let me, let me call the next speaker. Okay, because I probably, the next speakers are well, after you. I'm here right now. No, no, but. We're trying to get answers for this I, family. But I can't give you. You're asking me. I want it 
the okay. Corporation Council. If your son was missing, would you just be sitting there nice and quiet and poised? Absolutely not. And you know what? All right, this that's is all I want Absolutely to know. not. This is not about me not caring about the family. This is about me not having a response, a response that came through the legal department on who has the information. But you would get one if your son okay. was missing. Okay, so Madam, Madam, Madam Clark, can I have the next speaker, please? Mr. Itell, Michael Itell. Hold on, hold on one second. Who's the third speaker? Louis Vega. Okay, all right, we're going to bring you back to the family. Okay, Mr. Eitel. Good evening, everybody. My name is Michael Eitel. I live at 463 Prignitz Ave. And in all fairness, and I'm not taking any sides, the political sides at this point, but the prosecutor should meet with the family, even if it's behind closed doors, because the family does have a right to know. That's at the bottom of the line. Even if they don't re report it out there, the family has the right to know. That's at the bottom line. So they could have to continue to go through the process to continue to fight for that rights. On the other side of the coin is that people are watching this city council argue amongst each other. And this is absolutely shameful. When I used to live in Parsippany, now I'm a resident of Patterson, and I'm a voter that's registered in the city of Patterson. I need every single candidate to tell me why should I vote for you when I'm paying your salary, even though I don't own a home, but every single resident who either rents or owns is a taxpayer. At the end of the day, they're a taxpayer. So why should I vote for any candidate out there? I need them to contact me. I'll go to your house. I'll meet you at Dunkin' Donuts, anywhere. I need to know why should I cast my vote for you? And the other side of the coin is my vote for mayor, because I'm very disappointed in what's happened with the city. In the last 40 years, I've seen it go down. I've tried to be nice. I've tried to uh, look at things all good. And that project for Continental Can, that's a good project. Now, I applaud that project, because I remember my parents used to work in Continental Can. So I remember. I was born on Sussex Street. And if you drive through South Patterson now, besides Main Street, it looks like a war zone. Down by the A&P, there's illegal trucks, garbage all over. Now, I, I, and I text you all the time, and you know that, Councilman, I'm, I'm, I'm on, on it all the time. But that's how we're going to do If we're going to bring business to the city of Patterson, we have to clean up the city of Patterson. Because if, I'm, if I want to open up a business, I'm not going to come to a dirty, crime-filled city. Because then I'm not going to get any business. The same thing as if I want to buy a home. I'm not going to buy a home in, in, in a dirty city. My grandchildren, my, my daughter-in-law will not bring my grandchildren to Patterson. She won't. And I try to tell you all over it because of the, the stigma that we have here. There was two people shot yesterday. There was another one shot the day before. I need to see the council come from that side of the chambers to this side of the chambers. The council represents the people. And at the end of the day, you have to say, we had enough shootings. We have enough crime. We need to go out there and be on the corner where the crime is. Like Mike Jackson's out there all the time. So he's, he knows what's going on. But we need to have a unified city. When council people argue amongst who's this one, I didn't get the information here, the mayor is doing this, and they're all running for election. This looks horrible. The people, you see it on YouTube. You can ask council president, I have no problem. I used to text her. People are watching this on YouTube across the state. And they're saying that there are a bunch of no dopes in Patterson. And at the end of the day, my vote for mayor is Aslan Gao. I want everybody to vote for Aslan Gao because we need to take the city back. We cannot continue going in the direction that we're going because otherwise we're just losing hope. Thank you very much, Mr. Aitel. <laughs> Madam Clerk, next speaker. Next speaker, Mr. Louis Vega. Louis? Good evening, Councilmen, um, families, everyone that's here. Um, my name is Louis Vega. I'm a resident of Patterson since 1977. My kids went through school here, and this is not about me today. The reason I'm here today is I wrote a certain statement. As you can see, there's a lot of my brothers and sisters are here, okay? And I get passionate because I put 33 years into the city of Patterson. I aged out. I left because I was told by the government, 65, you're too old. 
but it's not here or there. I live at 779 11th Avenue, apartment 3A. My phone number, 973-851-3720. My purpose of me being here is speaking on behalf of Chief Brian McDermott. He is a son, he is a father, a husband, a leader, and a street firefighter. Not someone that spent his career behind a desk. He supports all city agencies. When, he, when he's asked to show up, he's there. Yes, that's the job that he chose, leaving his family behind. He's dealt with retirements and has worked with the administration, and thank you for you guys, that he's been able to replace retired people with new people. The list comes from civil service. He doesn't make that list. He's visible 24-7. Now, I'm speaking on behalf of this because I went uh, pretty close to with all these guys here because I'm the oldest guy that was left in the department. How many chiefs did I go through? So I know how it operates. But his office, that is his business. He's visible 24-7. He was a participant in New York City during 9-11. The parades are gone. The balloons are gone. That's all gone. Handled pandemic emergency. Ran into the Passaic River as chief of the department because two children broke through the ice. Who does that? He's got trained guys. We have all the boats in the world. This chief broke through the ice to get those two kids. He has had to deal along with his staff of 350 men that come with 350 personalities. And I'm gonna cut it short because the bell's ringing. He's brought revenue through fire prevention enforcement, revenue through EMS, recruitment drive that has been going on for years, public safety talks in the schools. In closing, I ask this council that we put our differences aside and continue to work together for the benefit of our residents. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Council President. One second. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vega. Thank you. Council Madam President. Clerk, one second. Madam Very Clerk, who's quickly, the next speaker? Wait, one second. Who's the next speaker? Mr. Rucker. Okay. Councilman Jackson. I think we should give Mr. Vega the opportunity to complete what he wrote. He has a large amount of representation. All the guys could have signed up. And, you know, I mean, extending him a small variance of, time, variance of time just to allow him to complete his thought, I think it would be uh, courteous. I, I think I could accept that, too. Thank you, sir. All right. <laughs> I appreciate, Clark, um, more minutes to the, yes, I appreciate the uh, Councilman Jackson for uh, this opportunity, okay? This sea of gentlemen and ladies, unfortunately, because, and I also have a copy of it, there is a city ordinance that says no city employee, members of division will not make public statements concerning the work, plan, policies, or affairs of the division, because that's his position. This is why this whole sea of men, because of this council paperwork, they can't speak. And they've asked me on behalf, I'm no longer bound by this, to speak on his behalf. I'm just asking that, again, the media's out there. Issues have happened. He's had to make tough decisions. Some good, some bad, in some people's eyes. Who is in his shoes? 
Give him a chance. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Rucker. Very quickly, uh, Council President. Councilman, I'm sorry. Let, let us go. No, Councilman, I would like to complete. We still have other family members here. Okay, but it just only take a quick moment. Now we're all going to speak, Council President. Now we're all going to speak, Council President. I just want to make, make sure I put it on record. While we have a great number of members of the fire department here, I want to make sure I put it on record because we spoke about it, but I didn't get the opportunity to speak to the clerk. You know, my intention is to write the, uh, the resolution to reinstate Firefighter Hunt with full exoneration of all his back pay. And I noticed that the administration has not gotten it done yet, so I'm going to make sure that we put it on tonight's agenda by title. Only. Point of order, Council, so what, Council what? President, we're in public portion. We could discuss business after public portion is done. Okay, so, it's not, so, it's not, so it's not one a matter second, of public one portion. One second, Always. Council members, there you we go. We can't pick please. and choose when we want to allow Council, Council members to speak. Councilman no. and Councilman Jackson, okay? And, and I know that you've put that here because most likely you all will leave as soon as the public portion is gone and then the councilman but I, I i will just say this i the the there has been a process in place right now it is my understanding that everything is being written that through legal and the persons of the the fire the firemen um can, you know what if you could just quickly just just address that wait a minute Thank you, now, Council President. No, 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 no. no. Wait, 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 wait. You want an answer for everyone here? No, no, I, I'll accept that because Thank I, I'm you, Council President. Corporation Council. I get you Thank you, Council okay. President, for that uh, opportunity. So we have been in touch um, with uh, Firefighter Hunt's uh, attorney. We've had several rounds of communication, and we are uh, advancing our discussions uh, with his attorney through his attorney. So I expect there to be a, a resolution of that situation okay. shortly, okay. but we are engaged in full discussions with his attorney and are moving at their pace. Yeah. That's okay. all I can say right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I know that's all you can say right now. Okay, thank you. Um, Council uh, President. Mr. Rucker? Just okay. quickly, Council President. Just quickly. Go ahead. It'll be very quick. Councilwoman Mames. So I just wanna put this on record. Um, when we're sitting in the council meetings, I, notes are taken to provide us with an update on request from the city council, what we've asked or we requested. So in last week's meeting, there was a discussion around the committee of the whole. However, on last Friday, I received about five phone calls stating to me, Councilwoman Mims, we received information that you are advocating for the council of the whole. I got very upset because that was not true even in the discussion, I did not say a word. So I reached out to the clerk's office and I thank a, a deputy clerk, I thank our secretary. I thank them because they, made, they watched the video and I thank them for that and made the correction. And I just wanted to put it to the public and to the firefighters. They were trying to circulate a lie regarding me because of a human error that could be made when someone's taking notes, but they screenshot, they screenshot it the council request and sent it to the firefighters. And the firefighters called me and said, did you, and it was an error, but I'm really grateful that I was able to speak to those individuals and resend it to them. But I think it's egregious that someone, someone would take information that is given to the council, screenshot it, and send it to firefighters to try to, dis to, to make me look like I am doing something that I did not do. So I want to put that on the record, and let me state it for the record. I have the receipts. I think it's embarrassing. I think it's disheartening. So I, if someone up here said, oh, I didn't do it, I don't know who did it. I'm not blaming anyone, but someone did it because that's an internal document that someone took a screenshot of the material and they sent it to our fire department and accused me falsely of being the person when it was an error made 
in the written request. So I want it to the public. I am keeping it because if it happens again, I am filing a harassment charge. I think it's unacceptable and it should never happen again. So Patterson, I hope you're watching and you're viewing. And if Ming would be able to zoom in, I would even show you the receipt of what was sent to me and the update. So I just wanted to put it on record to the Patterson viewing public and also to the firefighters that are here. So if that rumor mill is circulating through your department, it is an absolute lie. MIMS is not a part of it, and that is not this far from the truth. So I just want to, on the record, spread the truth to them. MIMS said it, and I'm not sure who sent it, but whoever sent it, I'm putting them on notice as well. Thank you so much. Council President. So it is, it is uh, obvious uh, to no, me. No, 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 Mr. Rucker. Point of order. Point so of order. Second, no, no, nobody's going to speak. No. It's a point of order. Public public portion, portion. This is what That's I'm going to say. Everyone out here watching, you can all see, you all have eyes and you all have ears, all right? You let one person make a statement, they go off of the subject. Then you allow, because obviously, oh, yeah. if I'm letting one council member, now the other council member is going to say, oh, favoritism, yep. to then speak on something else. And all I'm just going to say is this. That person that sent you that should be putting on notice who's the person that sent it That's to right. them. Because at the end of the day, you have a, you send a text, you know who you're sending it to. That's right. But with that said, I don't want to discuss that. That is something else. We're in the public portion, and we have a family here. We have a family here that's been waiting, and I've been stating it for over two hours, that we need to continue with city business. That's this right. is why these meetings, these workshops, will no longer, after today, will no longer. Our regular meetings, by law, our regular meetings are televised, the workshops right. are not. Mr. Rucker, Mr. Okay. Rucker, Madam right. Clerk, if you can please start Ernest his time. Ernest Rucker, Patterson, and you, you New give Jersey. him the four minutes he's asked for. All right, Patterson, Go New ahead. Jersey. Uh, first of all, let Two me minutes. say to the firefighters, I don't think there's anyone in this town that doesn't like a firefighter, okay, the job that you do. But I believe in transparency in everything I argue. And transparency in this city is non-existent. So we, the state of New Jersey Supreme Court, had to rule on two items to make sure transparency was forced on you. But I came here today for another reason. Dark money in campaigns. And I don't want the administration to have this idea that I'm doing anything for the administration because I would kill myself first. I'm, I'm sorry uh, Councilman Mendez is not here because there is something very troubling to me. Joseph Ferrara was the ex or former chairman, Democratic chairman of Bergen County, was arrested for racketeering, all kind of political schemes, some of the shit that happens here in Patterson, he was arrested for. And I am told, and I'm going to be waiting for an answer from Mr. Mendez, because I believe we give everybody an opportunity and a right to defend themselves. I want to know if he is accepting that money, and if Mr. Big Joe is campaigning and raising money for him now. These questions need to be answered. Along with understanding, I'm not no one's puppet, and I'm not agreeing with no one because of something good to do. I am tired of coming to this council and watch the fight that I watch every week. Like I have nothing better to do but sit here and watch you fight. So I want Councilman Mendez on the record to explain to me this connection that he has with Big Joe. Okay, when I do something wrong, see, they call the cops and they want to lock you up. When you all do something wrong, you hide behind the cover, oh, this is private. You can no longer in your settlements hide the fact of the settlement. Supreme Court rule. Supreme Court rule. Now, as far as the chief is concerned, I did agree, and I'll say in the front of these young men, I believe that the report that was written should be public. Let's clear this man and go on about our business. What is the secrecy? What is the secrecy? 
And, and Councilman Mendez knows I'm not playing about what I'm asking for. And if I have to ask every week until I get an answer, until some of y'all help me get an answer, because I'm watching you, it's four weeks away from election day. Yeah, you know what, I, when I say that kind of shh, well, I'm gonna cuss, but you understand what I'm saying when I say shh, okay? We need you guys to perform like professionals. You, want, you tell us you don't want us cussing even though that's a violation of the First Amendment, but yet you fight. You fight. We need an ordinance on the book, and I think it needs to happen now. We need to look at this dark money and where it's coming from. And if some of y'all are getting that dark money, I advise you to stop. And it's time that we know where this money is coming from. Now, I know I got four minutes, so let me hit you with something else. And, and in closing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it is your job to protect us. And if you cannot protect us in our interests, I advise you, don't be around on election day. We have a very large force of people that are tired of what they're seeing, and people are going to be replaced. All the tricks that you're doing, all the tricks the administration is doing, all that is coming to a head. All of it. We don't need council to be on workshop. This is a workshop, this is a working process. I agree with that. But damn it, every regular meeting I'm gonna burn the house down. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Yes, Madam President. Um, Ms. Tobias. I'm sorry, can you repeat the name? Michelle Tobias. Okay. Ms. Davila, you don't know Ms. Tobias? How are you? Good evening. I'm sorry, what I brings can't, me I here tonight, you. hello to everyone, haven't been here in a long time. Don't want to come here because this is the worst city I ever lived in all my life. It's so sad that we all sitting here so late and have to go in Patterson that ain't nothing but violence. So what brings me here tonight, Ms. Davila? I've been calling you. I haven't seen you since about 29 at my building. I'm asking the council and that mayor who never sits there to come to our building. I live in Freedom Village. We are seniors that are going through abuse by a couple of young girls in the office who don't know how to treat seniors. So I'm asking my councilwoman, who I spoke with today, Ms. Mims, Michael Jackson, I would like to have a meeting there with the tenants and all of you to help us get respect as seniors. They are going up on a lot of the seniors' rent, and they're calling me. Now I'm asking the council, we are seniors who need help. These buildings was put here by, through the council. Now, please, can you tell me how we could get this meeting going that I've been asking for for two years? Every time I call that mayor, I get no response. So I had to come somewhere where I don't want to come. When I leave here tonight, I'm going to be very afraid. So please, I don't want to disrespect no one. Please get us a meeting in Penrose. We can't go to the bathroom. We can't have meetings. We can't sit in the hall. But the mayor could come with a, a drugstore and have a meeting and don't tell us. I can answer. We live there. We pay rent. I don't care about drugstores, drugs, all that. 
tell him to get there and help us seniors get some respect and get that building the way it should be. Madam Thank you. Uh, Madam Thank you. President. Thank you very much. Just quickly, please. Okay. I just, yes, I did. Um, thank you, uh, Michelle Tobias. I did uh, speak with you today. I have been on the phone um, all afternoon. I did speak to a rent leveling lady named Janelle. I did speak to a uh, Health and Human Services Director, Joel <coughs> Ramirez. Um, I have the resolution in front of me that they can only raise senior, seniors, 65 and okay. above, 3.5%. Yeah. I have spoken with the regional manager for Penrose. I am now waiting for a call from the vice president of the Penrose company to, and I'm requesting a meeting, and that meeting is gonna be happening very soon because what I said before, your building is a component of four different components. Senior housing, Section 8 housing, market rent, and then an ESC, which I really don't understand what that is, but there's four components in that. Uh, and I was understanding that of the 130 units in that building, 19 of them are market rent apartments. So Michelle, I will call you tomorrow again. I haven't heard from the vice president yet, but a meeting will be set up. So we can get to the bottom of that. And of course, I ask you to make sure you tell all your 19 residents there that they need to call Joel Janelle down in the rent living office at Health and Human Services. Okay, but I will call you, thank you tomorrow. You. Thank you very much. Thank yep. you. I will call you. Okay. Madam Clerk, who's the next speaker? Yes, Madam President. Our next speaker is Mr. Gray, Mr. G. G. Gray. Uh, good evening. Good Actually, evening. I came in here to make an announcement. Uh, most of you know that I am uh, president founder of a great organization called Patterson Care. And what we're doing is, you know, the kids just came out of the pandemic. So what we're going to have is what we call breakfast books. I'm sorry, I better get it right because Val will kill me. <laughs> it's Easter basket books and breakfast. And what we do is that the children come to 159 Governor Street in the great city of Patterson and we cook them up. A Mr. G's type breakfast. Some grits, some home fries, some pancakes, some sauces. They get to enjoy a nice breakfast. They get to enjoy books, read books. They get to take the books home. And at the end of the session, they get to take home a nice basket. And uh, basically, I'm, j I'm just making this announcement. If anybody would like to donate a basket uh, to a ch uh, one of the childs, we would be more than appreciative of that. And uh, that's what I came here for. But when I walked in here and saw all the plexiglass gone, I'm like, wow. I don't know if, if, if COVID's over or what, but you guys look nice like this. So when I saw the glass gone, my question is, I noticed there's one board that does not meet in person. And that's the planning board. Can anybody tell me why? Because we want to see them. Because if you go in the fourth ward, and no disrespect, uh, Councilwoman Ruby Kai, those buildings look crazy. And that's the board that's approving this hot mess. I mean, there was a little tiny lot on Rosa Park. I didn't even think a house can fit there. But some guys came one day and got out of a truck came back the next day, it was a house there. And to our firemen that's here, whew, man, when one of those buildings go up in flames, you guys, yo, my hat go off to the firemen because they work, I, and I seen them, you guys know, I got great pictures of them putting out fires, and sometimes I don't know how to do it. Because it could be a house in the middle that's on fire, and the one on the left catch it a little bit, but the one on the right, they, no burns, no nothing. So we got a, one of the well-trained fire departments. But these buildings, somebody got a better look at them. Believe me, they're just like too close. And most of you guys know, I sat on the Board of Adjustment. And you know, I was the toughest one up there. You know, everything that came to me, I was like, no, this is not right. And I want to go back. I wish Al was here. 
Because that beautiful building that you guys like, if I was on the board, there would have been some restrictions. I'm not gonna just give them a building and say you can put anything here you want. How do you know you're getting 200 workers if you don't know what's going in there? I'm sitting here and I'm like, what? You don't know what company's coming. So where did you get that number from 200 or 300 employees? When you guys vote, just think about that. And the reason you don't never give them a clear check, six ward. How about if they say, well, you know what? We can bring Budweiser in a liquor warehouse. You think they want that in the six ward? Man, they're going to go crazy. So just be mindful, guys, when you approve stuff like this. Never give a blank check to nobody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, next speaker. Yes, ma'am. Next speaker, uh, Mr. Giovanni De Jesus. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'm gonna say I'm sorry if I ever disrespected anybody or any of your council person, you know, anything on my behalf, on my, my family behalf. I apologize. But I'm here today for you guys, not the council man persons, but you guys give me some answers. I've been over a month here and some change and I still haven't received any answers. I had to write this down because when I get to this mic, I just get frustrated and I get depressed. I have my mom here, I got my brother, I got my family here with me, I have my niece here with me and it's very stressful. And I'm being patient and patient and patient waiting on you guys to give me answers and I still haven't received nothing. And it's getting to the point, like, it's like, what did y'all do to my brother? This is what I wrote down. I'm not here for politics. I'm not here to lie about anybody. I am thankful to the Heldon Police Department. I thank them so much to my brothers and sisters from the community of Patterson. Thankful for the Police Department of Patterson, the Sheriff's Department, the Prosecutor's Office, the State Police for the search of my big brother, Felix. I am here on peace and love and respect to speak facts about my big brother, Felix, who went missing on the hands of Patterson Police. I want answers, that's all I want, answers. I could show you guys proof what I have of the cop having three interactions with my big brother, Felix. I have help from the community of telling me that the cop did arrest my brother. You know, I just want answers. What do you guys have for my family and the community that have been helping me? It's very stressful, it's very depressing. Like, I have to get up, at the same time you guys get up in the morning time, I get up every day, I don't sleep at night. I get up every day to go to work at five o'clock in the morning. Cause I have leadership. I am a leader. I follow my leadership. I have leadership, I have respect, I have quality, and I have growth. That's what leadership counts about. And it's not fair for my family to be here. Every single weekend, we still haven't gotten no footage. It's not fair for us. We all understand, we all understand that it's an investigation, but what went wrong? What happened to my brother? All I understand is the cop arrested my brother, took my brother, and on my own brother's behalf, since when officers do that? Since when on your own behalf you get picked up highly intoxicated and get dropped off? First of all, you cannot do that. If a person is not 100% in mind, if I'm wrong, y'all can correct it. If a, if a person is not 100% in mind and they're highly intoxicated, you pick them up, you put them in cuffs and put them in back of your car, you are self-responsible of this. You guys are recording this. Where is the footage? Where is it at? Could I have footage of my brother the same way I have footage of your officers arresting my brother? Could I have some answers, please? Huh? You got the footage. You have it. Why can I have my footage of your officers arresting my brother? And my brother telling your officers, if I'm... If, and correct me if, if, if I'm not correct. Your officers, my brother asking your officers to drop them off on Prickness and Front Street. And that's a lie. 
Because my brother don't know that area. My brother don't know nothing about the second war. How come not even the second war with my brother got lost at where the police officer dropped him off where the problem happened? Why he haven't contacted me? That's not his problem. That's not his problem. I'm not accusing him of that. I'm not blaming him of that. I'm blaming the two officers that arrested my brother that night. First of all. Second of all, why is the mayor hiding the footage? Third of all, why is the internal affairs, when I walk in that office, tell me I cannot speak about it? How? This is my brother you're investigating. You're not investigating anybody else. You're investigating my brother. Let me get some answers of my brother. I gave you the proof. If not, y'all would have threw it under the rug. Y'all would have threw it under the rug. If I wouldn't have y'all showed y'all the video of those cops having not one interaction with my brother, but three interactions with my brother, y'all would have threw it under the rug and y'all would have tried to hide this. Could I have some answer, please, today? Please? Don't look at your tablet. Please, I'm talking to you, sir. With all due respect, please. Okay, th th thank you very much. I know your time is up. Um, Corporation Council, if you can, uh, I know that we it, asked it, you this, it's this question. It's not nothing against ya. It's not. I understand that. Listen, I, I understand. It's above ya. This is the mayor. I, I, uh, I, I may, truly, may I, Council President? Corporation Council. If I could, um, I was actually planning on speaking with the family when they were done at the podium outside, and I'm happy to do so and have a brief discussion. Um, I'll also remind the family that I don't control the police. Um, I don't control internal affairs and that all I've done is tried to be an asset as much as possible. So, um, you know, I'm happy to speak to you when you're done and your family outside. Now, I don't want to speak and, nothing and off record. I want to speak everything on record. My community, my help need to know what's going on with my brother. They've been helping me. They out here helping me day and night, day and night. I don't want to speak nothing off record. This has got to stay on record because you never know what can happen to me out there. So if you have any answers, anything you have to say, listen, this is my family out here. The same way you guys are my family. The same way, with all due respect. If you have anything to say, any answer that you have for me, you could give it to me now, please. If you don't have nothing, I'll appreciate it. I'll be back here next Tuesday. Maybe you could gather more information about me for my brother. So I, I think I probably would ask this, since uh, the internal affairs is overseen by the prosecutor's office, has the administration reached out to the prosecutor's office? Is there anything that they've given to indicate, you know, in terms of releasing footage? Uh, thank you, Council President. Obviously, I, I cannot disclose the status and the contents of every, any internal affairs investigation, but I will share with you and I'll share with the family. And I understand this is not what you want to hear right now, and I understand that you're frustrated. I understand. If I, if I may finish, please. Okay. Um, there are a significant amount of internal affairs cases that are pending. This case, though, has been taken from the bottom of the pile and moved to the top. Pursuant to my conversation with internal affairs, we expect that investigation to be resolved uh, in the very near future. I cannot give you a date, and I wouldn't give you one because if it doesn't happen on that date, I don't want to be it, for it to be misleading. And so as soon as that investigation is done, we will look into whether or not we can provide that to the family and we'll reach out to the prosecutor. Just please let me finish, okay? okay? We'll reach out to uh, the prosecutor's office. We'll see if we can make that report available to the family. And if the prosecutor's office permits us to do that, then we will. So, so wait, wait, wait one second, because now, now something is, doesn't sound right to me. The Heldon Police is the lead agency. So the prosecutor's office, everything would go through the lead agency. No, no Council President, if I may. So um, Heldon is the lead agency for In investigating of the missing person. Okay. The family had come to the police office, uh, police uh, headquarters previously and uh, raised this issue. I believe at that time, they did not want to make an internal affairs complaint. But nonetheless, as I think Director Spezial had indicated previously, the police department initiated its own internal affairs review as to what happened that night. So while Haldon is still working on the missing persons part, 
uh, Patterson PD and the prosecutor's office is still uh, processing the internal affairs part, which is separate, right? Because one is looking for uh, Mr. De Jesus, and the other one is looking into the actions of the police officers. My understanding is that the internal affairs process, like I said, has been expedited, and we expect to have that process done shortly, and if there's discipline to be imposed, there will be discipline imposed um, up to termination if it's warranted, and if we can have the prosecutor's permission to release the findings of that report. Well, wouldn't the prosecutor reach out to them as well? Like I can't, I can't speak for what the prosecutor's okay. office does. All right. I, I can't, ma'am, please, just a second. I can't speak as to what the prosecutor will or won't do. I can tell you what we'll try to do. And, you know, okay. I will personally reach out to the prosecutor and see if I can, if she'll agree. Um, I can't really speak with people chirping in the background. It's I, very I understand. distracting. And so with that said, and, and I want to thank you, there, there is no, there is no um, unfortunately, there is no rebuttal back and forth. I know that there's another family member who's going to speak next. Uh, Council President. President. Council President, it wasn't Please anyone from right. the family. The family was actually listening intently. It was the members of the audience. Okay. So I'll just wrap up with this, if I may, Council okay. President. As soon as that internal affairs investigation is done, um, we will reach out to the prosecutor's office and ask if we can release that report to you. And if the prosecutor's office allows us to do it, I'll do it the same day. And if there's discipline to be imposed, if these officers are found to have done something wrong, they will be disciplined up to and including termination. And that's where it is right now. So I expect this to be done shortly. I cannot give you a date, but like I said, it went from the from one of the newer complaints to being uh, at the top of the list. Okay. Council Can President. I say one more thing, please? I'm sorry that I'm taking you guys time. I know it's late and everything. But if you come to see, if you come to see, I think on my behalf, they are wrong from the beginning not reporting my brother, of picking up my brother and dropping off my brother. Now, one thing is, could I have the prosecutors or whoever it is in charge speak to me and speak to the community? Because I'm not by myself. The community been helping me. The community been asking me questions, and I cannot answer them. The, I want, I want, this is nothing by politics. I want video footage of the cops interacting with my brother. Why can I get that? That's my answers, and that's it. That's all I have to say. And I apologize for taking your time, and I do respect all of y'all and the help that you guys are doing, Heldon, Patterson, the state, and everybody. I really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. But I want footage. I've been peaceful. I've been nice. I've been relaxed. But into this day, my brother is missing. And to this day, this woman right here, y'all see this woman right here? That's my mother, oh, man. That's his mother. She's going through it. She's going through it. She's missing her son. You know, and it's not fair. That's my older brother. That's the one that raised me. I'm 32 years old, he's 41. He raised me and my older brother when we came to Patterson in 1996. You know, his daughter, I have his daughter here. His son cannot even come here. You know, this is devastating. And I want answer by the next meeting. I don't want to hear everything is under investigation, son. And that big screen, I at least want to see these officers arresting my brother and letting my brother go. That's what I asked for. Simple name. as that. Just give us their name. Or Thanks. give us their name. Like that, I could put a complaint, a written complaint against them. Because I go down there to Patterson Police to try to do a written complaint. When you grab the written complaint, what it says, officer's name. Badge number. They said, no, you did a video complaint. No, I don't want video. I want everything in written. Okay. The same way I have everything in written. I have proof of everything. You know, this is what I'm going to say. Thank you. You guys have a good evening. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Clark, the next the Crystal next Crystal Garcia. Crystal. Okay. Good evening, everyone. So we're back up here. 42 days missing of Felix. Um, last time we left, there was many different comments, and I don't want anyone to feel attacked as if we're attacking anyone specifically. We're not here to attack anyone. We're not here for any of that. It just really saddens me, and I actually just wrote this down because I, I like to stay focused. Like he said, with everything that our family has going on, we're not focused. Our, our mind is everywhere. So. 
42 days of misery, pain, execution. It just saddens me to feel, see that we still have no answers, not a day or step or closer to knowing what happened. We know where they went wrong and negligence and jeopardized his life. Now I have to say, Council President, you defamed my personal character calling me a liar. But if I may go back on the statement, it was that I said that the car was found in a day. I didn't state who found it. What I meant was big search party, big, what I meant was big search party. I didn't mention who f the media, it was all over the press for when it's authorities, yet alone for when it's minorities. Just like the example of the dog, we're not attacking anyone, don't take it personal. I should have used the dog example first. If it wasn't for your correction, correction on my behalf, you know, I, if I offended you, it's not my intentions at all, any point. I was making was that had it been an officer, a council, or a mayor, the search parties would have been very invasive. Also have to thank you for the correction of the mayor. There was a back and forth in a consecutive contact with a Michael, whom the mayor knows personally from my understanding, who happens to be related to a distant family member of the family as to why he would be in contact with a whole different total person that isn't assisting in the search is beyond me. Sharing information that, has been shared with the fa with, that hasn't been shared with the actual immediate family, mother, children, brothers of the missing person is just lack of leadership. All of our calls are recorded. So we have no reason to sit here and fib. We have all information and footages to stand behind us. Recordings, all of our recur recordings are ahead of us. We also were the ones that gave out the information to you guys to be ahead of the search. The first interaction that that mayor had with this family was February 23rd, simply saying that the Patterson Police Department and the de departments were working together with the leading case that is held in. Okay? So, why did, why did he go to someone who's most important forgot to address, he for, yes, he did get a message that says, who's this? The most important part was he forgot to address he was the mayor of Patterson. How, how can someone continue a conversation without engaging who you're speaking with? So if it wasn't for us to be coming to this city council, we wouldn't have been heard. Last week, I mentioned about my Oprah, um, Oprah request. Just so happens on Wednesday, guess what I get? a request, um, an answer back, right? So with the answer, it said that it was too broad, as in it was too wide. I was very specific as to what I wanted. Now, that it was denied is something different, or they, they needed to find another way or a delay to give me a denial is something different, or that someone didn't do their job on time is also something different. I said, but, I was there in person. I did it the same day. I redid it in person. Why? I want my date to be my original date, not a, not, not a later date, because it's not my fault that someone didn't do their job on time and didn't get me my request back. One. Another thing, I put in an Oprah request for the school footages in the, in the, in the Board of Education, and it was denied to me. Denied. I mean, transparency, this is very big on transparency. If you have nothing to hide, don't you want to clear your name? I mean, I'm just saying. But besides all of that, right? We still have no response from coming in person, but then, but they will continue to see me again. We're not here to play back and forth. When we leave, we want to continue to spread the negligence of the officers, dumping us taxpayers, humans, in cold blue, whether taking advantage of not being in the right state of mind and the word of finding Felix. We have to thank all teams that are assisting and help find Felix and Jerry, who is assisting Captain Guzman. But we're still not a step closer as to knowing or having any closure. Now that it has been this long and they're collecting DNA, you don't know until you live it. This is a human we're speaking about. A a son, a father, a brother, had the officers did their job to protect and serve at the moment, we would have had him the next day. He was already under the influence, not in the right state of mind to himself. Better yet, put him behind the school where if God forbid it was cold blue that day and hypothermia is a chance, a student could have found him. This isn't right, something has to be done. Something has to be changed in this community. We're gonna start with proper leadership first. We the people need to make sure that there's we the people need to make sure that we get ready to get all the seats that needs new asses up there that's willing to fight for us, not against us. We put them there, a bunch of, a bunch of cleanliness programs, re recreational sports, children's, but for damn sure we need somebody to save this damn city. We need protection. We don't have safety. A grown ass man went missing and y'all talking about parks. Hopefully we could get some answers next time. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, Madam Clerk, the next speaker. Yes, uh, next Council speaker, President. Mr. Elvis Durham. Elvis. Uh, Council President, the reason I. No, Councilman. Councilman. Before the family leaves. Councilman. Councilman. Okay. Thank you. They might constitution, so they will wait for me. Uh, absolutely. You. And when, when the public portion is done, you'll be able to address it. Amen. And because you was having a conversation with corporate counsel to the family, I, I understand, but councilman. Right. But that's okay. I'll wait. Uh, Mr. Durham. How y'all doing? Right. Um, Elvis Durham. Elvis Durham, 283 Broadway, Patterson, New Jersey. Y'all can hear me? Um... I came up here today, before I start, uh, I don't know me do this, but it's right. Do want to apologize to um, the Fifth Ward Councilman, Louis Velez, not for what I had said, but the way I had said it was unprofessional. So I do apologize on behalf of Myself and my production, I apologize. Um, okay. I got a couple announcements. Um, Center City Mall, got Burlington Crow Factory, will be open on April 1st, that's a Friday, on 301 Main Street, downtown Patterson, New Jersey and they are hiring Patasonia. So another Center City Mall. Got a couple other announcements. Um, um, please be patient with me tonight. Just wanna get these announcements out the way. Um, last week, um, it was a senior citizen that came down here to the city council meeting, and she was saying ain't that much stuff to do in the city of Patterson. Um, and it's true. So I created some events, some recreation. First, I have a bus ride on May 27 going to Florence, South Carolina. That's recreation. Anybody want to contact me, you could contact me at 862-823-3895. I also bring gospel back to Patterson, New Jersey. I was doing gospel promoting for over 27 years. So this is not no over, over the night thing. Um, council women, Ruby Cotton, Mike Jackson, Lisa Mims, Louis Velaz, all came to my events in the past. Um, starting um, April, Knife, right here in Patterson, New Jersey. In Patterson. We are bringing Gospel Fest to the city of Patterson, New Jersey. Um, it's going to be at New Birth on 62 Park Ave. Patterson, New Jersey. Louis Velez, Councilman. That's your war. Um, at 5 p.m. That's Gospel Fest. Also, that's, that's April 9th. For more information, you can contact me at 862-823-3895. Also, on April 10th, we will be on the first war at Mike Jackson War on 70, well, 170 North Main Street at 4 p.m. with the North Main Gospel Fest. Okay? And one more announcement, just want y'all to know. On this, sat this Saturday at 5 p.m., one of the newest bishops, international bishop, Bishop Gamal Jones, will be speaking at Redeem Fellowship Center on 292 North 8th Street in Prosperity Park, New Jersey. Bishop Gamal Jones from Faith of Deliverance Ministry will be in Passaic County at Redeem Fellowship Center, 292 North 8th Street, Crossway Park, New Jersey. He will be speaking at 5.30 p.m. this Saturday, March 19, 2022. For more information, you can contact me, Patasonia, 
3895. Okay, God bless you. And next week, I will be announcing who I will be supporting. Thank you. For the mayor election. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Next speaker, former Councilman Gao. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Council Members. Good evening. You're welcome. Um, I don't want to criticize anybody. But again, you know, last week we were here and we talked about, you know, the government and how we should operate. Okay, it's a workshop tonight. I'm glad to see that we're going to vet things out. But the conversation you had earlier with the developer that was here, why didn't we just tab table it mm -hmm. for a discussion? Mm -hmm. Why did you waste two hours on a conversation that should have never happened? So when you talk about, you know, we got the public portion, we got all this, you know, you're the governing body. You guys are responsible for this. It got on the agenda. It's not working for anybody. You got to go through your committees, your economic development committee, your finance committee. Do all the vetting there. You, I mean, and I want to. I want to say one more thing about those guys that were here. Uh, Councilwoman Mims, excuse me. You hit some buttons there with pilot and tax abatement. And they said, you know, we're gonna talk about that or they'll come back to that. Look, this city has been sold. I don't have a problem with developers investing in the city of Patterson, but when you're giving people who are investing in the city tax abatements of 30 and 40 years, that's a big problem. And you're not gonna be here in 30 or 40 years, God willing you will be, but you're gonna to be too old to understand why we are where we are. Mm -hmm. Financially, this city's in trouble right now. Yep. I'm very concerned about the fiscal responsibility of the administration and how it presents itself. But ultimately, it's this municipal council that controls that budget. You guys determine if it's gonna be a yay or a nay. But too many tax abatements have gone through and more and more people are coming here they want to invest here. This is prime property, Patterson, New Jersey, believe it or not. And what they did was they ran all the neighborhoods into the ground and they allowed certain developers to come here, buy all the properties, knock the properties down, build nice apartment complexes, at triple and, you know, and quadruple the, the rent rate. And, and, I, and I also want to share this with you. When I used the term developer the last time I was here, I talked about developers. I didn't mention anybody's name, but somebody contacted one of the developers and said that Councilman Gal threw their name out there and the developer contacted me. Uh, that's okay. And I'm gonna have a meeting with that developer and I'm gonna meet with him and any developer. But somebody actually thought that I was doing something that might be erroneous, just like they did to uh, Councilwoman Mims this evening with that document. So whoever you are, sneaky, Shame on you, because what goes around comes around, okay? And whatever good you're putting out there, you will get. And whatever evil you're putting out there, you will get. So God says to us, don't retaliate. We don't need to retaliate, because if I retaliate, then I'm doing the same thing the person did. And what do we do? We harm ourselves. But God says, I'll take care of it, and I can assure you, he takes care of it. Test God. Let it go out. Put it out there. Put what you want out there. Developers want to come here. They want to invest. That's awesome. Stop with the tax abatements because they're going to get rich. And if you look at all the big cities, Jersey City, Newark, all those high rises that they put up, they got those incentives. They came there thinking that things are going to get better. Did things get better? Did crime go down in any of those cities? And I mentioned this before. Liberal leadership is what's hurting all the cities in the United States. And you think about that. You can invest all the money you want, but it doesn't change. Look at the shootings that we just had in the last couple of days. How many more people are gonna get shot? And it has nothing to do with the Patterson Police Department because we have one of the finest police departments. But you know what, for years, they're talking about, and, I'll, and I will conclude, for years they've been talking about defunding the police department. Patterson has been doing that. 
And you know that when they laid, they laid off the last 125 police officers. And now at the last minute, we're talking about recruiting police officers. And one more thing I want to say about that is when you go to a high school and you want to recruit our youth, youth that can't even have a drink until they're 21, or smoke a cigarette, or gamble, you want to put a gun in their hands? Now, the age limit is from 17 or 18 to 35. I wouldn't, I'd rather have some mature people. Don't go to our schools making it look like we really care about our citizens, because they don't care, meaning this administration. This administration has a major problem, and I'm not talking about its, its employees, I'm talking about its leadership. So let's stop with the abatements. Let's really talk about putting real police on the streets. Let's really talk about fiscal responsibility. That hasn't happened. You can't do it a month and a half before a campaign. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam. There are no more speakers, Madam. Can I have a motion? Move to close. Please. Second. Uh, move to close the public portion by Councilman Velez and second. I'm sorry. I think it's Councilman no, Abdel we'll Move. move. Oh, I'm sorry. Moved by Councilman Abdelaziz and second by Councilman Velez. Roll call to close the public portion, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Roll call to close the public portion of the workshop session of March 15, 2022. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Khan? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, I just, normally I just say yes that we're going to close the public portion, but I just want to say to the, um, to the, the Jesus family, I, I, I feel your pain. I hope that we can um, get the answers. Um, that we need to get to the family. I think I gave you a number last time. Um, I need you to, I mean, I, I gave you some numbers that for you to reach out to some people, but I just want you to know that I feel your pain. We all feel it. Um, you know, as the saying would say, I grew up back in the day where they said, I pray for you, you pray for me. And we have, must continue to do that. I always say, I don't need to know you to pray for you. And to me, that's so important that, and I can feel your pain, we all do. Uh, and I hope that we can soon, soon, soon get to, to the bottom of what really happened. I just wanna share that uh, with your family, with you all. I also wanna say too that um, Michelle Dubai is about Freedom Village. Um, I will be speaking with my human resource. He, I don't know if he left. Um, I, Bond, did you yeah, put on record yeah. what so you were doing? We, we are working with that um, for, for that um, part of it that we need to do. Elvis is always, um, he highlights the city, Elvis Dorm. He highlights everything that's going on, <laughs> you know, which is good because we need to know, um, you know, things that are happening in the city and things that we need to do. Uh, and so I just want to say to um, you all out there, I normally just, just say yes and just close the meeting and, um, you know, all of us, I'm telling you, all of us have a lot that, 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 that we're going through, all of us. So to the family, I'm with you. We're gonna get to the bottom of it. Cause God gonna see to it that we get to the bottom of it. You know, people, you know, talk about God and, uh, but you know, they talk about God and sometimes they don't follow through with their heart and, and we must keep kindness in our hearts. Uh, Madam Clerk, um, uh, with that being said, um, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. First, I want to just go on record and say, I mean, it's impossible for us to address the public's concerns and, 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 you know, just at the end. We need to figure out a better process in which when people come to the, to the podium, they expect answers. Um, uh, you know, when I was dealing with some troubling, troubling, troubling personal issues, I turned to people who I thought was in a position to be able to help. And when I got answers like the power of prayer, that was extremely disappointing. There's a place for prayer. If I'm looking for prayer, I go to the church and I ask the pastor to pray for me. Pray for me. When I'm coming to elected people, when I'm coming to people who are tasked with the responsibility of doing certain things. I'm not expecting them to be my, my pastor. You know, and even though we do have people here who are pastors, they carry a dual role. When they sit here, they are looking to do the job of a council person. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear, and no, no disrespect, Council Woman Cotton, I'm not talking about yeah. you, and I know you, your beliefs, like but you are, we're talking about the people. 
Councilwoman, Councilman Jackson has the floor. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm really saying, Councilwoman, it's not about that. It's about people are entitled to answers. People are entitled to answers. And then when they come here, you know, when they're looking for transparency and, and, it, and it goes across the board with everything else, we are, people are entitled to answers. They should be able to get answers. You know, I'm tired of, of having to be, this is a very stressful position. We sit here many nights unable to give answers to families who have come here. I mean, I, I've been in this, this same exact position on a number of different occasions. Miss Naomi Peaches Simmons, when her two sons were run over on Temple Street by an off-duty officer, and we still, still to this day, this woman doesn't have an answer. We took it. We took it. We took a a, 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 an opportunity to try to just an acknowledgement of her her loss to rename the street, and it was a, the former, not the current, the former corporation council who took arm against it and said we cannot do so because of something that, that they had lingering. Um, obviously, the, the, the Jameek Lowry family, the Shania uh, Coley family, families that's left without answers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very stressful situation to be put in. I mean, how do you, what, what do you say to someone? You want to be able to provide them with answers, and you want to be able to provide them with a level of accountability on government. The government needs to be responsible for its actions. When you employ someone, you need to be responsible for it. And what happens is, ultimately, the city, the, the community pays again because the, 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 mis act, the, the uh, misconduct of employees that's not held accountable ultimately is paid out through a, through a lawsuit that taxpayers have to pay for. It's very disappointing. It's very disappointing. And relative to Mr. Tobias' comment, Corporation Council, there is an ordinance that was passed that restricts um, developers or uh, landlords from increasing the rents. I know Councilwoman Cotton talked about it before, but I wanted to talk about it again because this specific de developer is also one who's benefiting from a long-term tax abatement, who's paying less than his fair rate in taxes, and yet he has the audacity to increase the rents to senior citizens and as if we you know we're not actively you know taking a role in that so anyway i i, I don't want to I, I know you are a councilwoman and i received the calls from multiple members in that in that building as well i made the calls to corporation council's office and again although we passed the law we have no say so in the enforcement it comes right from the administration and if 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 developers have developed a, a, a habit of miss or not a follow, abiding by the laws that are passed, this what continues. Now, lastly, and I'm gonna say this because I'm gonna be very clear. You know, the, I, I respect and appreciate all the members of the fire department, including the chief and the work that he's done, he does and, and that they do in, 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 in putting their lives in the line and saving lives when, it, when, it, when, when their number's called. But without a doubt, there is always a measure of an, or a necessity of accountability. And if you have nothing to hide, there should be no reason to hide anything. And I'll just rest it right there. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Kalik. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We do need prayers. And I do prayer with the Councilman Jackson. Uh, to the Jesus family, my heart goes out to you, but there is so much we can do, even administration can do. There is a process. All of us waiting for the process to end so we could have a closure to this situation. We pray that he comes back. Soon we find them. Believe me, everybody up in here, even audience, everybody reading the news, Syria Patterson, I saw it on Channel 11 the other day. Everybody's prayers is with your family. And everybody's with you. And there's, there's, there's so much, as an elected official or even, even an administrator, there's so much anybody could do. The, everything has a process. That's all I'm going to say. And also there is a comment about tax abatement came up. Council member, I've been here for six years. 
I've, I've voted on, on um, tax abatement maybe twice. No, maybe three times. Maybe three, maybe three times. Time. But every time anything comes up, tax abatement, tax abatement, like we are, we are, we are giving people aware this tax abatement for 30 years, 40 years. That's not the case. It's been on the books, I believe. So I think we need to get some of the facts right too, twice. Um, and uh, to close the public portion, my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councilman. Um, Councilman Mendez? Um, thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, so before I make my comment, my quick comment about the public portion, I'd like to just um, apologize to my Patterson resident, to the viewers. I came late into the meeting, have a late schedule on my business. I called my council president and I- I let everyone know. And the council president was, uh, was aware about that I, will, that I will arrive late at the meeting. Um, but with that being said, um, to the Jesus family, we all in this together. And let me just say this, um, you know, since the beginning I've been posting, you know, this, uh, the picture on Instagram, you know, and, and try to support and things that we can. But it's sad uh, and, I, and I feel your pain. I really feel your pain because leadership matter. And the problem that we have is that we have a mayor in the city that he choose what he gonna want to pay attention to. He really choose what he, he's supposed to pay attention, be on top of this case since the beginning. You guys came multiple times to the city council and that was when he paid attention and started having conversation. That, broke, that really break my heart. When you're an elected in that position, when you're an elected official, you should care about the people, you should care about your constituent. And we waited for the result of that so-called investigation. Everybody's waiting for that. You know, um, with that being said, I came late to the meeting, but I know um, uh, Mr. Rocker was on the public portion. And it's important because uh, even though I got a multiple call and he asked me a question, and I like transparency, I know Mr. Rocker, I don't know if he's not here, if he left, but he followed the meeting. It's important for me to answer this. Mr. Rocky, he asked me a question if I was getting a uh, donation from so, a, a, a person in Bergen County. And you know, I don't feel bad for, this, uh, for him to ask me this question because my answer is transparency in government ha has to be everything. And corruption has to leave City Hall after May 10th. And the answer is simple, but the answer is no. And, and, and I would like to let Mr. Rocker know that I would like to handle my left report to Mr. Rocker, the way he could look at my left report, and I will go beyond that. I want to invite Mr. Rocket to go into my private account to double check, and, and I would like to, I'm very open. I would like to let him know that all the funding that I have in my private account belongs to my business, and if you allow me one more minute. Yeah, so I'm very open to the community, to anybody that wants to look into my finance. Uh, thank God, God already blessed me more than I deserve. And more, my goal is to serve the city of Patterson, and I'm not here for a paycheck. I work really hard to put food on the table. But I'm not, I don't feel bad about that question because we have to question every person that we have in government. We have a mayor that is being funded by one person. That account, nobody knows who put money on that account. And I've been challenging the mayor to release the people that put money on that account because as a mayor, he should be transparent. So if we're going to talk about transparency, let's talk about transparency. He called a reporter in multiple occasions and he hired himself behind somebody else to put a complaint on my account, my let account. I just got a couple of thousand dollars in my account and I put a loan in my campaign out of my pocket. I don't pay, about, I don't pay attention about money when I'm running for office. All I care is about the support of the people, the support of the voter. He could have a million dollars and he's still gonna lose on my thing. He could keep calling the reporter to investigate me. I'm very open. He could go into my private account, my elect account, I have no problem. All I do is work hard to put food on the table, and I don't need a position to serve and to help my family. With that being said, I'm just going to continue with, uh, I know Councilman Gao left. I just want to wrap this up. Tax abatement, Madam President, I just want to say that I just want to put this on the table. The Economic Development Committee, I spoke with the director. He always wants to have meeting over the phone. I told the director, I don't need to have a meeting with you over the phone. Let's set up a committee meeting, an economic development committee meeting twice a month, and I'm still waiting. Councilwoman at large Mims is part of the economic development committee. No, I no. don't need to have a no, conversation no. over the phone with the director not if you. my council colleagues are not pressing. That, I don't think anyone should be back into the, into the workshop. And I know we put it for first reading, but I'm gonna put it on the record that I've been waiting for him and I'm gonna ask him again. I need to meet twice a month on the committee. I don't need a phone call from you, director. 
I just need to have a meeting with my colleague present to make sure that we go over the item. And tax abatement, it have to, we have to put a stop into the tax abatement in this city. Our Patterson residents, they can't afford it to Councilman. pay $2,200 in rent in, one, in a two-bedroom apartment. And we have a lot of developers that they get, it, they get those tax abatement, and their rent is so high that it's so unacceptable. Can Councilman. It's so unacceptable. We got to listen. Councilman, your vote to close the sure, public Sure, I'm going to close, Madam because President. Because you just got here. We have yet to do the 60 items on here. I just so got, I'm respectfully I, I, asking you. I allowed sure. you allowed for more minutes. I've given them Thank to you. you. I'm asking you Thank to you. vote. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to close with this, Patterson. There's no way that we're going to move the city forward if we continue allowing people to get those 20, 30-year tax payment when a Patterson resident can't afford it to pay the rent. My vote is yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councilman uh, Mims? Councilman Mims. So Mendes. first of all, I'm on a I am not, Council first of all, for, I am no, not no, on an Economic okay. Development yeah. Committee. No, Councilman, Councilman Cotton is, yeah. Councilman Cotton is on the committee. We did switch one time right. where I sat in the meetings and she sat in community development. But I just want to put on the record, I am not a part of that committee. So now my two minutes can start. First of all, to Mom De Jesus, the daughter, the brothers, the family, uh. heartfelt prayers. I was grateful the secretaries, they made copies. I've been passing them out, Thank just you. in the community, talking, posting, as you already know, just making sure, and we have to pray, right? <clears throat> we have to pray, be pray because prayer changes everything. When we dismiss prayer, that's a problem. We can't say who, what prayer is powerful, whatever. Amen. We Amen. just need everybody praying, Amen. right? When we're in a desperate situation, Amen. desperate situations require desperate measures. Mm -hmm. And when these situations are going on, when one family's hurting, we all hurt. Yeah. I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother. I don't even know what, just sitting here, and when you said that was your mom, I, it just brought tears to my eyes because I can't even imagine what's you know what your family is going through we dealt with this si similar scenario with um the coley's family and we were helping that family and there with them doing prayer vigils and pray and we did prayer that's how it started i went there yeah. to do prayer for them and eventually they they found her but we never stopped that so know that we're pray i am praying know that whatever you need reach out praying for the information to oh, be yeah. provided to the family, and most importantly, praying that your loved one is returned home safely. Um, I wanna go into Ms. Tobias. She's been requesting meetings, but the residents are calling with concerns in the building and they're being resolved. But when the meeting takes place, right. I definitely would like to be a part of the meeting. But in closing, I think it's a serious concern because when we sit here at the dais, we're sitting here for hours, 1 o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. And when we sit here, we're, I'm in the community every day, every single day. And when we vote on an item, for example, last week there was an item presented before us for parks, 5.7 million. I have been one of the strongest advocates for parks. Everyone knows it across the board. I'm only going to take a, a minute, um, Madam Clerk. <laughs> strongest advocates for parks. But what I find egregious is we received the money March 2021. I need the public to hear this. The administration didn't tell this council they had the money. I brought it up in the meeting because I was on a Passaic County call and I overheard it and I asked the administration, did we get 33.5 million? I questioned it and the BA said, yes, we did. I was the person that told the council that we got the money since last year. So when we say in a paper, newspaper article, people that voted against it are against children, I think that's egregious. But more so egregious, some <coughs> of the items are emergencies that we've been crying and fighting for for two, three years. Yes, we have. Why did we wait until two months before election to say, get it done or these people and this is what i'm going to close with this not just say it not just write in an article they were calling residents and saying to the residents yeah. do not vote for mems she's against children yeah. and I those residents that, call me every last one and they're all watching right now they're all watching and let me tell you something residents watch the games Watch the politics. 
When children were being shot and killed in this city, they didn't even go to the funerals. They didn't visit the families. So if they were concerned about the children, it wouldn't be a last minute gesture. Do we need those parks and fields? Absolutely, I'm all for it. But the emergency item should not be in that packet. Because once we approve it as a council, it's a procurement process. Six more months, those fields are still not gonna get done this year. So it's another cheer, cheer, pom pom to the community to make you believe that there is a real concern. So Patterson, I want you to hear me clear. To every person calling you saying don't vote for MEMS, don't vote for them. Because they're playing with your emotions and they're playing with your mind. It takes six months after an approval for procurement. That means the fields and the parks still would not get done this year and summer is coming and we have shootings all over the place. So Patterson, please listen to that. Be clear on it because I don't play politics with kids. I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother. I'm clear to my assignment as your councilman at large. Thank you, my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Villers. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I tried to, uh, <clears throat> tried to be uh, short in what I gotta say. First of all, uh, corporate counsel, if it's possible, and Madam BA, uh, through the chair, uh, there's a code uh, 360, chapter 381, of uh, rent leveling, uh, section A. Can, can uh, Mr. Mean, can you supply Mr. Mean that part of the rent leveling uh, regarding the uh, three and a half and five percent and put it on the website, uh, put it at the channel 77, and put it and send a letter to all the landlords if you want to make sure that they don't they don't go over 150 percent of rent increases to uh, uh, people out there. Uh, there's a rent leveling needs to be applied. There's a municipal ordinance. I'm getting calls of people from 1,300. They're getting 1,700 rent increase uh, and threaten them if they don't pay. They need to move. That's unfair. We have. Um, we have an ordinance that prohibit people go over 5% of rent increase yearly. So, and they cannot go retroactive on that. So, hopefully they do that and put it channel 77, channel 32 on the website. Mr. Irvin Durham, you know, I, I forgive you since day one. So let's keep on working. Uh, let's keep on working for the betterment of the city. And if you have any event out there, you could so invite me, I will be there. Um, to the family of the Jesus. You know where I stand from day one. When I received that call that your mother was in the hospital, that the Jesus went to his house and from that point he disappeared. There's a, there's, there's a scenario that when you mention your mom and she's here, there was a scenario in the cross of Christ when The soldier says, oh, I believe it was Jose, son, allow me a minute. Son, there's your mother. Mother, there's your son. I wish I could do more to bring peace to this family and say to the mother, Jesus, mother, Jesus, this is your son. And son, this is your mother. And I want to send this message to any law enforcement out there and anyone that have seen or have, have contact or having him kidnap or got him hide or whatever, please release him, whatever he at. And the law enforcement, please do 150% more prosecutor come forward so we could say, mother, here's your son, son, here's your mother. And we could bring peace to this family. My heart goes to you. When you call me regarding the Kearney situation, you know how I was. Praying to the Lord, that was not him. My, God, my heart goes to that family that also lost a family member in that river. But we want to see this and to go to conclusion. And if it's tomorrow, I have to make the call myself to the prosecutor's office and talk to them and let them know that they have to have a strict communication. Only they ask in a strict communication. Lead them to the process. 
There's a piece missing here. And that piece missing is in their hands. And I always got to say, please seek legal advice. Sometimes they will put the words that they like to hear and they probably will release faster the way it's supposed to be. So in our side, in our side, listen, I'm gonna say we understand what you're going through. I recall, and the Patterson police could recall, there was two, uh, and I will wrap up. There was two young men, 14 and 11, that got missing in 2011 in the city of Patterson. I went all the way down to Delaware to pick them up, myself. And they was missing from Patterson with the conjunction of the police and the police of Delaware and all the, all the above. But we could do better. So hopefully we could say, mother, here's his son. Son, here's your mother. Saying that, Council President, I apologize because we all have different passions, different way to express. <laughs> Saying that, my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam President. There is so much that um, I can say, but I will address the mother. Um, as a mother that I am of only one son, and you've been blessed to have more but you have your oldest missing. I as well wish that I could do so much more. I know what I do on a daily basis, and I do believe in prayer, but I know that every day I call the Heldon police captain, and I speak to him, and I said, where are we? Is there any information that you can provide? I do that. I don't tell any of my colleagues. I don't have to come here and come before you and say what I'm doing or what I'm not doing. You know why? Because at the end of the day, the information that you really want, I can't provide. But I know what I'm doing. And every day, and when I go to church, and when I'm home every day, because I think about you as a mother, how I as a mother who has a son, how would I feel? When I made this statement the other day about the car, there was no police there. The only person that was there was my son. And all he thought about was protecting me. So when I addressed that, I said, there was no police. He found the car. Police came after, and I have yet, it's been a month, nothing. I'm driving around with a rental, but that's besides the point. This is about the family, and I want you to know, I have been in direct contact also with our legal department to say, where are we? Can you talk to the prosecutor? Because it's obvious, even with me, she can't speak to me. The prosecutor is over the Internal Affairs Department. But I still, even if, I, if they say we don't have anything yet, I'm still there. Regardless if you believe it or not, all I can tell you this from the bottom of my heart is that I am there and I'm trying my best. I just can't give you more. I don't want to lie to you. I don't want it to be this, this, you know, oh, no, I'm not going to flare you up. I'm not going to say the nice words. I'm not. But I am telling you from the bottom of my heart, to you, to the mother, to the brothers, to the entire family, everybody, that I have been that one person. I, I, you can, I don't know if you speak to the captain daily, but ask him if daily I have a conversation to tell them that my heart bleeds for it, the entire family. So with that said, I just, I just, you know, there's so many other speakers that were here today, but my heart is bleeding right now. And you know, as a mom, you know, I, I look at, you know, what I'm going through right now as well, that if I don't have my son, I don't know where I would be tomorrow. You know what, because at the end of the day, everything that we do, we do for our children and for a better community. So, you know, with that said, again, through legal, legal, you know this, you know, I tomorrow will be on the phone again, and even if the prosecutor doesn't respond to me, I'll be with the captain. Captain, is there anything to update the family? So, you know, with that said, um, Madam Clerk, um, my vote is yes to close the public portion. Thank you, Madam President. The Thank vote you. is eight in favor, one absent. The public portion of the workshop session is now closed. Thank you very much. Council members, um, it took 40 minutes to close the public portion. So I would respectfully ask that I need to go to the hospital 
and I've been trying here for four hours to leave, and I can't. So I'm going to ask you to please, these items here, please, if they've been discussed, can we please? No one here knows what I'm going through right now. And I'm asking you, please, let's stop the games. Let's get this city work going. Council, Pre <clears throat> council President, it's, it's, it's your curfew as a council president. You could look through the item and assign it where you want to go to the work. Councilman, I don't want anyone to say that I'm doing things that are not correct. I'm tired of the games. My son is in the hospital. Well, I count, have council to sit here. You don't council president, I, here. No. I think it's an emergency. I cannot. I know. Yeah, that's what I, I'm saying. I think I it's cannot. an emergency. All I'm going to say is this, because I've been battling with this for two days. Two days. But I understand that I have. You know what? Because at the end of the day, I chose to run. And the people voted for me. So I have to sit here and respond. Okay, there's nothing that I could do for my son. <coughs> so all I'm, all I'm saying is this. I'm asking you now that I need to leave here before midnight. So I'm asking, we have 58 items that need to, that I consider that we can move so, quickly. Council President. And with that said, Councilman, Ca Council Councilman. President. Councilman. You, you're the Council President. You have a Vice Council President. If you think there's an emergency, he's capable to move the agenda forward. Ca Councilman. I am asking right now, we're going to move through this. Okay. There's items here that we don't need to discuss, that we know what goes on consent. Okay, okay, got you. Okay. Go ahead. There's items that we'll discuss. This is workshop. Yeah. Yeah, we could, yeah. we could, we could. Motion to close the meeting. Second. Second. Thank you. Madam Clerk, I'm going to accept the motion to close the meeting by um, Councilwoman Mims, a second by Councilman Mendez and Velas. Madam Clerk, you and I will discuss this agenda. Any council member, if you can just please just, I think everyone here can look at their agenda and know what they want. Correct. The second readings are moving to second and the first are meeting, moving to first. And from there, and all um, the licenses the items, will go to. I know yeah. that the items that are being in terms of the dedication to the park, so that'll go on regular, so you can have a say. But then from there on, I'll move forward with this full agenda. And um, if there's any questions, then you can pull it off the consent. Yeah. Madam you. Clerk, roll call to close the workshop. Yes, yes, Madam President. Roll call to close the workshop session of March 15, 2022. Councilman Abdelaziz. Councilman Abdelaziz, we're closing. We're closing the work. Yeah, uh, well, there's, if we're pulling items, we're yeah, we're going home, but there's two items that need to be pulled, as Corporation Council knows, that cannot move on to workshop. That's number, which one's Corporation Council? 3754, that has to come back to workshop. That cannot be on the agenda, Council President. She said we can work uh, all that out tomorrow. My vote is yes. I'm sorry, Madam President. You said um, 54 and 37? Yeah. Yes, they, those two, he did discuss it. He did, you know, they did go through finance, but he had concerns and legitimate concerns at that. So I'm okay to pull that and bring it back to finance, and then we'll discuss it for the next workshop. Okay. So, Councilman, your vote to close the workshop? Yes. Okay. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Khalid? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Villain? Yes. Madam President? Thank you, Council Members. My vote is yes. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. The workshop session is now adjourned. Good night, everyone. That's crazy. Do you need anything?